Union College, an Adventist institution in the United States, offers a very unique degree that has the perfect mix of adventure, education, and service. It's called International Rescue and Relief, or IRR. They focus on training domestic and international first responders, such as paramedics, firefighters, international development workers, and others. Each student spends their last semester overseas working in clinics and practicing first responder medical service and disaster response. This course has previously taken them to places like Malawi, Nicaragua, and other parts of the United States. Because the COVID-19 pandemic kept the program participants from leaving the country, they decided to spend their semester of field training in Alaska. So we are here in Alaska on the IRR capstone semester. We call it the, the expedition. Uh, we are here in Alaska for 12 weeks um, doing uh, travel medicine, wilderness EMT, global health. We have uh, done glacier travel and, tra and uh, crevasse rescue. The students go through intense courses that teach many rescue and medical techniques. Much of their training leads to professional certificates that are globally recognized. Alaska offered new challenges, such as the Arctic weather. It's been chilly. Um, the weather has changed quite a bit. During our hike out for Wilderness CMT, we did a 26 mile hike out to a Klondike Garrett cabin and practice wilderness medicine. And uh, it was negative 10 while we were out there hiking and snowshoeing and stuff. Uh, today it's a balmy like 18, 19 degrees and we're out here on the ski slopes practicing avalanche search and rescue. The IRR program's training is intense for a reason. The students need to be prepared to serve any individual no matter how difficult the situation. But the IRR program is not only preparing students to treat people's physical needs in dark times, but their spiritual needs as well, much in the way that Jesus did. So I'm a big believer that Jesus didn't just preach at people. He actually built relationships and cared about people before he started telling them about uh, you know, the good news. Being there for people and showing them you care, building relationships, and I think what better way to do that than through acts of service. And that's what International Rescue and Relief is all about, being there for somebody on their worst day. We're talking, you know, maybe an illness in the family or an injury, maybe a disaster, um, an emergency of any kind. That's where our students, when they graduate, that's where they will be, with people on their worst day. And I think it's really important to have people that have the love of Christ in them that they're ready and willing to minister to people in their darkest hours when they need it most and when they may be most receptive to it. In the International Rescue and Relief Program, we actually have a motto that says, um, a career of adventure and a lifetime of service. A lifetime of service. That's the commitment that Union College is trying to cultivate in their students. It's in those moments uh, when you're working one-on-one -on -one with the locals, people that are in stress, in need of assistance that we're actually able to not only put the technical skills to practice, but also work on those more soft skills like being kind, being loving, like living that life that I think Jesus would be proud of and I think Jesus would even be there with us serving in those communities where we're working. Praise the Lord for people who are willing to go to foreign lands and help those in need. Amen. At this time, we'll have our special music by Sister Daphne. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Um, this morning, I'm going to sing a song for you that I used to hear my grandmother sing. And uh, she and two other of my aunts, um, and they, she sang the lead in this song. But back then, I didn't understand so much the significance of the words. Um, not understanding what this young woman had been through because my grandfather died at a very young age leaving her the mother of four children to raise um, my mom was only like 11 or 12 and she helped raise her brothers and sisters but they were they married very young back then too and so 
this song says, I'm on my way home. And uh, now that I'm older and I see what she went through and the determination it took, um, I have a whole lot more respect and appreciation for both her and the music. And just take this off here. I'm on my way home to the kingdom. Lord, I won't stop now. Got my feet in the path of righteousness. My hands on the gospel plow. I got a heart that's heavy laden, Lord. Rough hands and a wrinkled brow. I'm on my way home, home to the kingdom. And Lord, I won't stop now. I'm on my way home to the kingdom. Lord, I won't stop now. Got my feet in the path of righteousness, my hands on the gospel plow. I got a heart that's heavy laden, Lord, rough hands and a wrinkled brow. I'm on my way home, home to the kingdom, and Lord, I won't stop now. Just a few more days in this old world, and then I gotta meet my fate. I've set my sights on the holy city, bound by the pearly gates. I've been on this road such a long, long time, but I know I'm not too late. Cause I got a home, a home in the kingdom, and I can't hardly wait. I'm on my way home to the kingdom. Lord, I won't stop now. Got my feet in the path of righteousness, my hands on the gospel plow. I got a heart that's heavy laden, Lord, rough hands and a wrinkled brow. I'm on my way home, home to the kingdom, and Lord, I can't stop now. Got my mind made up to serve my God, his every will obey. I've got something way down deep inside that will not let me stray. I've got a song that keeps me singing, Lord, when trouble gets in my way. Cause I got a home, a home in the kingdom. And that's where I'm on my way, I'm on my way home to the kingdom. Lord, I won't stop now. Got my feet in the path of righteousness, my hands on the gospel plow. I got a heart that's heavy laden, Lord, rough hands and a wrinkled brow. But I'm on my way home, home to the kingdom, and Lord, I can't stop now. This works well. Okay, at this time we're he said this one I'm just gonna use okay I'm just gonna use the red one at this time we're talking about the importance of giving our 13th Sabbath offering this um, quarter at the end of the quarter it will go to the Northern Asian Pacific Division and so we want to thank you for giving your 13th Sabbath offering at the end of every quarter. And the 13th Sabbath offering allows us to give to specific projects that grow the church in tangible ways. And as I said, uh, it will go to the Northern Asian Pacific Division. And we have five projects that um, we're going to give to. The first one is um, 
to build an Adventist Lifetime Center in Mongolia. And the second project is to, um, three, for, to give to the three urban centers of influence in Taiwan. Project three goes to the Care Center for Chil Immigrant Children in South Korea. Project four goes to a mission center in South Korea. And project five is internet evangelism project, reaching the internet generation in Japan. Or heavenly, God loves a cheerful giver. Or heavenly Father loves it, loves it when we help others in need. Remember he said, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And that's taken from Matthew 25. He would also say, I have no church or school and you provided those things for me. From those in the mission field, we thank you for your support, and may God continue to supply all our need, your needs. Amen. At this time, we'll transition into the lesson study, and it will be given by Sister Barnett. And don't forget, we have a second class in the fellowship hall. Good morning. Just give me one second and we will be ready to begin. How's everybody doing this Sabbath? Good, good. It's wonderful to be here. God is good. And we have another fabulous lesson to go over. We say that every time, but guess what? It's true every time, isn't it? Because God's word is just so sweet. And no matter what we've been going through during the week, I don't know about you, but sometimes my weeks are kind of rough. But God is good to bring us through and to bring us together that we can study his word and his word truly uplifts us. And so each time I just want to hold on to it more and more because I know I need to be uplifted and I'm praying that you will see the same. We're going to be talking about law and grace and we're going to see how important law and grace still is to each and every one of us and what we need to share with others regarding God's law and God's grace. But for us to truly get the full impact, you know we have to pray. We're going to pray and ask the power of the Holy Spirit to fall afresh again upon us this Sabbath morning. So as the sun is shining, the sun will truly shine into our hearts. And we want even more than that. We want it to burn within us because we want to be used to share what God has given to us with someone else. But to have that, we have to pray and ask God to do something special within each and every one of us. So let's bow our heads and let's ask for God to do that for us. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us here this Sabbath morning. Thank you for the good news of the gospel. Thank you that, that you are still working upon each and every one of us. We're so thankful, O oh Lord, for your love toward us. Please, O oh Lord, forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I also intercede on behalf of my brothers and sisters here in the Sabbath school class. Please, each and every one, forgive us, O oh Lord. We want to do better, and we know we can through the power and might of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. So, dear Father, give each and every one of us power from on high. We want this lesson to be something that will just burn within us, and we all will receive a special blessing. And then pour out such a blessing that there's not room enough to receive, and we'll be compelled to share with our families, our friends, our enemies, our neighbors, our stra the strangers within our gates, whoever it may be, that the world will be lightened with your glory and you will soon come and take us home. Bless us, O Lord, and let us praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. As we think about this topic, law and grace, we're going to get a lot from just looking at the memory verse that they gave us. 
they gave us Galatians 2 verse 21, which reads, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. Let's look at first the importance of grace and law, just the, those topics. What is grace? What is grace? We're going to look at a text, but what is grace? Are we going to use mics? Right up here at the front. She, she, she raised her hand. Thank you. Grace is God's mercy to us when we fall. All right. He picks us up and sets us back on our feet. That's wonderful. So he just doesn't leave us in a fallen state, right? Does anyone else want to share about the importance of grace? Sister Bob. I would say grace is what God gives to us that we don't deserve. Test, Amen. test, test. Amen. Let's turn to a text. Genesis 19, verse 19. I want us to look at something. We're going to look at, and this is from Lot, the story about Lot. Genesis 19, verse 19. And I just want to just get a little bit of understanding from that text regarding how important grace is. Genesis 19, verse 19. I'm going to read it in your hearing. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. I want us to look at that first part. What is happening with Lot while he, while he is talking about thy servant has found grace in thy sight? Because what was happening then actually will be happening in our day. So that's why I chose this text. What was happening with Lot? Why he could say, thy servant have found grace in thy sight. Where was he? Where, where was he? He's in Sodom. What's going on in Sodom? Okay, it's getting destroyed because? Some horrible sins, right? So say that again. Go ahead. Sin abound. So he found, oh, sister, thank you. Because what text comes to our mind when our sister said that? We're talking about what's going on in Sodom. Lot's there, and she said sin was abounding. What text comes to your mind? Sin abound. Yes, praise God. Now, grace was coming upon Lot because sin was abounding, and God did not just leave them. He tried his best to warn them, and then he pulls Lot and his family out by God's grace. So we need God's grace. He doesn't leave us in a fallen state. Now, those who want to stay, we know what's going to happen. But that's why we're going to continue to pray and ask God to do so much more for us, because we don't want that to happen to anyone. Now, how about the importance of law? Why is it important to have law? Because someone's like, law, we don't need law. Why do we need laws? Order. Sister Bob? Laws keep us focused. Laws keep us where, where we can... Uh, with laws, we know how to behave. If there is no law, then we can be lawless and do whatever we want. But with laws, we have guidelines to lead us where we ought to go. When you deviate from those, then you walk into trouble. It's something you said, but, but we want to do what we want to do. We want to do whatever we want. Because that is our carnal nature. Uh -huh. Because of sin, okay. we have a, a, a mindset that is governed by the other person. But Our, with the laws of God, we know where he wants us to be, and we want to walk in that line. We want to obey him. Amen. My sister. Law is... It's not on? Law, law is our protection. Amen. Amen and amen. 
We just want to get a little preview of the importance of law and grace to remind us of that. So now, here's just what we want to focus on. You see in this text, it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. I want to talk about that frustrate and frustration. Frustration. You see what frustration is just in general? <laughs> a tangled mess, right? An emotion that occurs in a situation when I'm blocked from reaching a desired outcome. I feel frustrated when I can't reach something or I can't do something or something's happening. Situations, circumstances are blocking me from a desired outcome. The interesting thing is when you go further, frustration originates from feelings of uncertainty and insecurity, which stems from a sense of inability to fulfill needs. If the needs of an individual are blocked, uneasiness and frustration are more likely to occur. When these needs are constantly ignored or unsatisfied, anger, depression, loss of self-confidence, annoyance, aggression, and sometimes violence are likely to follow. I thought that was very interesting. That's just from Wikipedia. We're going to see how this frustration is trying to foil what God has on all those benefits we just discussed briefly about law and grace and where it originates from, and then we're going to see how it impacts us as we study this lesson. So I wanted to start it off. We're going to go right into law and heaven. We're going to see frustration, anger, and violence. So we're talking about heaven. Heaven was peaceful, calm. What else could you say about heaven? Relaxing, tranquil. What was it? Joyous, yes. Think about it, because even when we think about heaven to come, aren't those the thoughts we think about? How wonderful it's going to be. We're going to be with our Savior. We're going to be with friends and family and people we don't know, no sickness. No... It's just fabulous the way we think about it, right? And it's true and it's real because God is not a man. It's a lie. So when we think about heaven, then how do we get frustration anger and violence. So now let's look at Ezekiel. We're going to go to the law in heaven, what was happening, why we now get to frustration, anger, and violence. You had a comment, my brother. Yeah, as, as, as we look for the, toward the new Jerusalem, it's always better the second time around. Amen, amen. But guess what? It was good back then, too. It was, it was good. So we want to we just dwell on that right now because we're going to go to Ezekiel. That's why. Ezekiel 28, and we also want to look at Isaiah 14. And let's read it to hit our brains again. Go to Ezekiel 28, and let's look at verses 15 and 16. And someone else gonna, is going to read for me Isaiah 14, 12 and 14. And we're going to see what's going on in this wonderful place while we got frustration, anger, and violence going on. What text do you have, Sister Bob? Ezekiel 28. So the next hands has Isaiah. Okay, my brother here. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore... I will cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Mm. Right in heaven. Now, Isaiah 14, my brother here. It, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou come down to the ground? Which thou which didst weaken the nations, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend upon above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. In heaven, perfect environment. And we've got a created being saying, I'm going to be this. I'm going to be the head. 
Don't you think that's a lot of nerve when we want to usurp the authority of someone else? Someone else's head, and you said, no, you're not really the head I am. Because <laughs> I've got the qualities for it, and you really don't. The arrogance of it. So when you look at this quote from uh, Sin orig originated in self-seeking Lucifer, he was the covering cherub. That was a high position he had. But look here, sin appeared in a perfect universe. The reasons, we can't really explain why. It's not given to us why, but we know it started. So when you look here, the reason of its inception or development was never explained and never can be. Even at the last great day when the judgment shall sit and the books be opened, all at that day it will be evident to all that there is not and never was any cause for sin. Never any cause. So sin originates, we don't know the cause, but we know it originated in the Lucifer in heaven. So now let's get to the frustration part. As you looked at Ezekiel 28 and look at Isaiah 14, what was Lucifer frustrated about? And class, we are going to use the mics, correct, deacons? Yes. So please raise your hands so others can hear. So we will be using the mic, so please raise your hands. Yes, my brother. The problem with Lucifer is that he wanted worship. Yes. Worship. Enough. He has always wanted worship, and in the end, it's going to be who will we worship. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about it, because I want to talk about the frustration part. He wanted worship, but who was he frustrated with? Who? He was frustrated with the whole entire trinity because he wanted to be like the most high, just like I just read. Mm -hmm. He wants to be worshipped, bottom line. Hmm. Yes, my sister. The interesting thing is that he was frustrated with the very ones who created him and gave him every power and everything that he had and that's something. because he wanted to usurp their authority, which makes zero sense. Mm -hmm. Zero. That is frustrating. Now, as we're talking about Lucifer, I'm about to take your comment. We want to also think of ourselves, right? Because we're going to be getting in more into law and grace, but we want to see where the whole system was frustrated from the beginning and how we have a part in this because he's trying to give his attributes to us. So that's why we want to go through this process. We have to remember he was God's right hand man and he wanted more authority over him. But he was, we have to remember he, he was a created being and he was envious of the most high. Look at what the quote says. It's like my brother said, Lucifer was envious and jealous of Jesus Christ. Christ had been taken into the special counsel of God in regard to his plans. While Lucifer was unacquainted with them, he did not understand, neither was he permitted to know the purposes of God. Lucifer thought that he was himself a favorite in heaven among the angels. He had been highly exalted, but this did not call forth from him gratitude and praise to his creator. Why should Christ thus be honored before himself? I'm a favorite one. Why is he getting more honor than me? Well, ah. number one, Lucifer was not humble. He lost his humility once he, figured, once he found out that he had a lot of power and authority over the other angels. Mm -hmm. That was his problem. So he thought he can be able to be amongst the Trinity, since he was the leader of everyone else. But like I always said, in order to be a Christian, we all must be humble. And Lucifer was not humble. It's interesting. One second. Someone tell me the, the text, secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Where is that found? One second. Let's find that text. Thank you so much. Listen to this text. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed 
belong unto us and to our children forever, and that we may do all the words of this law. So it's an interesting thing is certain things have been revealed, but he was not to be in all the purposes of God, and he was not happy with that. Yes, my sister. Oh, excuse me, my brother. Lucifer, God, he, he, he said he wanted to be like God, but he wanted to be above God. God, he said, I will set my, my throne above the most high. And then, see, we remember things, see, Jesus is the power of love, and Satan is the love of power. So that's a difference. Amen. I like that, my brother. Let's look at these texts and see how we go from now frustration to anger. So now he's frustrated. Why am I not getting all the accolades? How come I'm not a part of those secret meetings to knowing what's going on, especially when I'm one of the favorites of the angels? So now we move from frustration to anger. So with that anger, we're going to see what he does. Sister Bob, you had a comment. Yes. Before the, 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 his, his, I would say, frustration, anger, whatever, went to God, it first went to Jesus. Who is he? He's always with God. He's always in this company and whatever they're talking, he can't be a part of it. And that caused him to be angry. And he decided that this was not going to go on. He was going to take action. Mm -hmm. So he started to get angry with not only Jesus, but with God. See? And he, once, he, he, he didn't stop to realize who his creator was. He thought that he had just as much power, just as much authority, just as much everything that he should be in the nose of everything and be able to do what they're doing. Amen. And that Amen. sort. Amen. Look at the text here from Story of Redemption. He left the immediate presence. <laughs> he left the immediate presence of the Father, dissatisfied and filled with envy against Jesus Christ. He no longer would submit to his invasion of his rights and theirs. That never would be again, he would never again bow down to Christ that he would take the honor upon himself, which should have been conferred upon him, and would be the commander of all who would submit to follow him and obey his voice. Oh, do you see how he's trying to subvert things of the law and grace of God? Ah, we can't answer that, but he was told. Well, I mean, we pretend a lot of things when we want to get what we want, don't we? <laughs> we do. It's like, or we have a selective, you know, selective memories, you know, so selective on what was said or what was done because we want to do things that's going to suit our purpose. Comment, my brother. Yeah. Well, it just shows us that if we do the same thing as he did, it shows what envy and jealousy would always lead to. Yes. Violence. <laughs> it's interesting. Wikipedia actually said that with, perhaps with frustration when, you, when we read through it. And now we can see it happening through, when we're talking about a law in heaven, a perfect environment, sin appears. So now we've got frustration in heaven going on, anger over what I can't have or what I think I deserve, then to violence. So we get to Revelation. What's the text in Revelation 12, verse 7? Yes. And there was war in heaven. Contention among the angels. Think that a perfect place. Contention. Ah, Lucifer was successful in his effort to incite rebellion. Go ahead, my sister. Yes. Go ahead. Envy is something far greater than I think we mostly understand. Mm -hmm. Envy is to want to take the place of, not just be like, but want to take the place of, but you can never take the place of someone else. You can never be exactly like them because you're not them. So being discontent with who you are, 
always leads to a violence because you want to destroy that which you cannot be. Oh my. Yeah. That is deep and so true. Sister Leontine. You're right. That, uh -huh. is, that is deep. You know, because I was thinking about, um, I wanted to make this comment, you know, minutes ago, but, you know, the Bible, when the Bible says, unless we be like little children, we cannot enter the kingdom of God, this is the problem. You know, kids come here, babies come here, they know nothing, right? So the rebellion happens hmm. the more strength that they get. You know, they, oh, I can walk myself. No, let me do it. You know, we have the same attitude. So we become frustrated with the very individuals that train us. That's why we have kids p killing their parents and everything. It is a sick world now, but it's only because we don't follow the prescription unless we be like little children. We cannot enter. Now let's see how law fits into this. But a comment first. You know, power and envious are a very volatile thing, situation being two things, it could explode. Because power, you will want to do anything. And the envy part of it, you will do anything. You don't care what it is to get what you want in spite of anything. That's very volatile, and it could explode at any given time. Oh, don't let this stop us. We're still going, the lesson goes on. <laughs> we got frustration, anger. We got violence. We got, what's happening to the law in heaven while all this is going on? It is not being obeyed because when the law was in place, everybody was following the script. But now there's a little discord among uh, the angels. So there's a little stir because uh, somebody wants uh, a little power and a little envious about it. Mm. Yes, my brother. Okay. Um, Lucifer and the angelic hosts, just like we are, were created. They all had to be tested. Lucifer had to be tested. So this test of his loyalty to God got brought him to frustration, anger, and violence. At the same time, the law of God was still in existence, just like it is right now. So Amen. for Lucifer and the angelic host to be challenged by the law, he had to go against it or go with it. So he decided that he would go out on his own and at the same time, um, he wanted to, uh, uh, he, right. brought, he brought confusion into the law of God, into, his, into heaven. So I, I, I just believe that, you know, that, that that was part of the problem. Hmm. My pastor here has a comment. Go ahead, pastor. Uh, Thank I'm you. assuming you're talking about law in heaven, right? We're still talking about law in heaven, yes. The thing about um, the whole of this universe, as there are trillions and trillions of heavenly bodies, all of them do not come together and stick together and cross each other's path. God, everything that God does, has done, and will do is based on law. 
and order. Yes, amen. Now, nobody has to test God's law. Nobody has to test his order. We are tested by it, not him. Amen, amen. My sister. Like I said earlier, the law is our protection. There are boundaries that God has set in motion to keep everything functioning as it should. Mm -hmm. The moment you break those boundaries, you're in trouble. Jump off the entire state building and see what happens. Hmm. You know, you're in trouble because you're breaking the laws of nature. You break the laws of God, you're in trouble. God set those boundaries for our protection because of his infinite love for mm -hmm. us. We have no reason to test them. Amen. So as you think about this concept, we want to move on to the next point. Because this is actually all put in place, this frustration of God's grace and his law, put in place by what happened in heaven. So now we get to us. So now when we get to Monday's lesson, the law in Deuteronomy, I like the verse, I'm going to read it for you. Deuteronomy, they gave you Deuteronomy 31, verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. So with all that we know what is happening with the law and how the enemy is trying to get us to realize that we don't need law, like he said, he didn't need law. In Deuteronomy, he's trying to bring us back. Let's come together. We're gathered together, you all. All of us are here right now. Each and every time, we're going to be looking at the various texts in Deuteronomy. It's like, come together. Why is it so important for us to gather together? I like those points. Let's talk about gathering together. Let's talk about hearing, learning, fear, observing, and I like Deuteronomy 32, 46, set your hearts. How does that impact us as we think about what the enemy is trying to do to law and grace for us? Why are these so important for us? Someone says, like, I don't need to gather together. Then we got another text, right? Forsake the, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Why is it important for us to gather together? Tell us again, sister. No, Sister Daphne, right there. Encouragement. We need, we need the encouragement. Why we need encouragement? I'm discouraged. Because we live, number one, in a world that is constantly Thank you. attacking us. It's constant. And so when you're going against the grain, when you're going against the current, you need encouragement. It says to not forsake yourselves with the gathering, lest you grow weary and fall away. We Thank need you. the encouragement. Thank you. I wanted you to come further because we, we need to hear it again. What else? Sister Leontine, you want to add on to that? Strength. We look yes. at the armies of the world. They're not few in number. They come out with multitudes. Mm -hmm. So when we bind together with the common good of helping one another, striving for the mark, we want to win. So we cling together with victory on our minds. Let's use another word. It said here. You heard it before. All of us heard it before. Why do you need to hear it again? Oh. <laughs> We're here. You, 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 you've heard some of these texts before. We've gone over. You need to hear it again. Why is that? We're going to come back and then forward, okay? okay? Sister. I like the phrase, united we stand, when um, if we're all standing together ah. and somebody needs encouragement or they're feeling down, we can boost them up by, Amen. by talking with them. Amen, united. Go ahead. When a baby cub is by itself, it's very vulnerable to mm -hmm. attack and to be destroyed easily. So we need to come together for that mm -hmm. strength and for that support and we can um, encourage one another and help one another to, to be strong and so that we can be protected Amen. against the attacks of the enemy. My brother. The reason we need to hear it again, repetition deepens the impression. That's right. 
And you know our minds need to hear it again, all of us, no matter how young or old. How about learning? We think, it's like, I'm older now. It's like, I know, I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> I think I know a lot of stuff when I really don't know anything, right? We need to continually be learning, right? How about observing? It's like, I don't want to just hear it. Come with things another text. I don't want to be just a hearer of the word. I also want to be a doer of the word. Sister Cheryl. You know, I just want to say, we, uh, this is just a different way of what everybody else said. We need to affirm one another. Because okay. with all the winds of doctrines that are going, so many people are being shaken out even now. Mm -hmm. They are stepping back from the faith that they were once uh, enjoying. And so we need to affirm each other in the faith so that you don't become discouraged and that you know you're on the right track. Plus, affirm each other in the ministry that God has given one another. Because sometimes, you know, when it doesn't seem to be going the way you want it to or you think it should, you get discouraged. And you, mm -hmm. we need to affirm one another. So I think that's just another way of saying encouraging one another. I'm going to take another comment, then we're going to look at this quote. Go ahead, my sister. Part of the tactic that Satan uses is to make you feel and think you are completely alone in what mm. you're going through. You, when you feel completely alone, isolated, it's easier to give up. Now, when you find out somebody else is going through it, too, and, and you know what? They're making it. God is helping them. It gives you encouragement. It's interesting on her comment. If you go back to the story of redemption, just on that comment right there, he told the other angels, some of them were maybe willing to listen to some of the true angels, but know what he told them? You've gone too far. You can't go back. So what he's telling us, going too far, just forget it. You might as well just keep on down the road because you can't go back and you're not going to be forgiven. My brothers. Yes. Um, I'll go back for a little, just a little bit. Uh, Jesus sent uh, disciples out two by two. And I found in my own experience, when I'm by myself, I get a little shaky. If mm. I'm testifying or witnessing to somebody. But if I got another brother or sister with me, man, am I a lot stronger. Amen. A lot stronger. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to take one more comment, then we're going to the quote. Yes, yeah. my brother. I think one, one, another important point is uh, the fact that God uh, calls his people together, and he started by reminding them, this is what I have done for you, what I have done for the people of Israel. This is my grace. This is uh, uh, the way I, uh, you, you, you were able to go to the uh, sea. This is the way I was able to feed you. So this is one way of reinforcing uh, our, uh, our faith, one way of uh, reminding us that he is our, he is our pillar, he is our stone, and we have no fear, no, uh, nothing to fear. Amen, amen. A quote I found as we were thinking about the gathering together, because they were to hear the law, they were to keep it, to observe it, to set their hearts upon it, to keep it all their lives. When you, you read all that, when you read all those Deuteronomy texts were given. But look what it tells for us parents, but also it impacts the church. I beseech the parents in our churches to make a solemn covenant with God by repentance and confession. Confess your past neglect, and in the fear of God, take up the work of educating your children in righteousness. A spiritual revival and reformation must take place. Then God's people can claim the blessings he has promised. When parents take up the cross and follow Christ, when they bring their lives into conformity to the will of God, their children will be converted. The word will take knowledge of the world will take knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus and have learned of him by their deeds of true religion they will bear witness to the power of Christ's grace that applies to us parents who make it up but guess what it applies to each and every one of us because we are a family here so when we make a solemn covenant with God in repentance and confession, when we confess our past neglect, we're going to have a spiritual revival and reformation that's going to take place. In the prayer line on Tuesdays, we dedicate to our children, our grandchildren, our great children, our nieces, our nephews, aunts, uncles, cousins, whoever it may be. We want to see a revival in the family. Now, when I say not just us biological parents, I said to all of us, because guess what? We are 
family. family. We're family. You're my brother's my sister. I'm your sister. You're my sister. So when we do this, can you imagine how wonderful it's going to be the power of God upon this church, upon our families? Oh, I want it. I hope you're getting excited right now because God said we can have it. So now, let us take this seriously about how important the law is in grace because we can have that spiritual revival and reformation. We can make sure the world is lightened with his glory and Jesus will soon come. But enough on that. Let's move on to the next part. <laughs> oh, it's for your good. Why is it for your good? Because sometimes we act like we don't realize for our good. It's like, oh, do I have to? Or we'll go through the motions because we're not taking it serious. Why is this whole thing about law and grace for your personal good? Because you have to take it personal or it's not going to really matter much. My brother, we're we going to do mics. We're up here. I say it's for our good because it's a transcript of God's character. And whenever God gives us his character, he's, gi he's giving us his best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you look on Tuesday's lesson, they gave us Deuteronomy chapter 10. And when you look at verse 1, they were given the tables of stone again. Again, for their good. Let's take a comment. We'll, we'll go on on that. I see the hand. Yes, in Exodus 19.8, when the children of Israel could not stand uh, to hear the voice of God, oh. they asked Moses to speak on their behalf. And Moses would come and paraphrase or tell them what God said. And then the children of Israel said, all that the Lord had said, we will do. But they didn't have to say that because... God has already made provision for them. For by grace are we saved through faith. Grace and faith is given to us by God for our good. And they didn't have to do anything. Because God had already made provision for us through the plan of salvation long before there was even anyone on earth. So everything that God is doing is for our good. To bring us into a, really, a right relationship with him. Someone give me Deuteronomy 10, verse 10. Deuteronomy 10, verse 10. All right, Sister Bob. And I, and I stayed in the mount according to the first time, 40 days and 40 nights. And the Lord hearkened unto me at, at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. That last part. The Lord will not destroy thee. He will not destroy us. We deserve to be destroyed, you all. We're going to get excited. And he said he will not destroy us. He gave the commandments again to them when he could have just wiped out everybody. And then Moses interceded. Remember what was going on back then. Moses interceded on their behalf. They had another opportunity to be right with God, and he wrote it again with his own finger just for our good so we would not be destroyed. That is wonderful. And yes, that sister. is grace. Yes, yes, yes. So it's for our good. But then we got to just realize it's for our good. Amen. Stop letting the enemy mess with our heads because that's what he's trying to do. Remember, he was frustrated, he was angry, and then he gave violence. He's trying to get us in the same pattern. Sister Cheryl, uh-oh. What you got for us, sister? Oh, wait a minute, I need a mic. Wait, they're coming with the mic. Speaking to for our good, obedience to the law is essential not only for our salvation, but for to our own happiness and the happiness of all those with whom we are connected. Mm -hmm. And so it's important. And besides, you know, if, if heaven is your goal, <laughs> you better learn to be obedient to the law of God through the Amen. power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, my brother. Yes, I think that's uh, another uh, uh, aspect of uh, how God's law and grace they are uh, bound together, and uh, the devil wants us to separate them and throw away the law. Uh, Moses just uh, destroyed uh, uh, the table. He just destroyed the law. He break the he break the table. 
But God used his grace. He could have destroyed Moses. He could have destroyed the whole nation. But what did he do? He said, okay, I'm going to forgive you, and I'm giving you my law. So law and grace, uh, there is no separation. Yes, my brother. Yes. As we know, the wages of sin is death. And because of sin, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. He gave him his law. And so the law is to protect us. God gave us that law. Just without that, death is what will result. So this is just for our own good. That's the point I want to make. Okay. Quick comment, my brother. We have to remember also that these laws were put in place to keep us from falling and to keep us all in line. Remember, four were for God, six for your fellow man. And those laws As we are, move? Those laws are Christ's character. Amen, amen. Quick comment, we're going to yes, move to our next. Comment. The text to support the connection between law and grace is Romans 5, verse 20. Amen. Romans 5, 20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Amen, amen, amen. So the lesson brings us on to now talking about <laughs> a slave in Egypt. I want us to think about, because remember, the enemy's trying to let us follow his same pattern. Don't go backward, because let's look at a little bit, and then we're going to talk about going forward. Going backward. Remember in Exodus 32, verse 1. Remember they had been given the law and everything, but then by the time we get to Exodus 32, verse 1, what are they ready to do? Go back to Egypt. I was a slave in Egypt. <laughs> so we're going, to look at it. we're going to look at it in a different aspect in a second, but just for not going back, why in the world would I want to go back to being a slave in Egypt? Mm. Why? It's, it's, it's fun being a slave, or at least the enemy wants us to think it's fun to be a slave, right? It's pl pleasure. Did they really? <laughs> That's what they said, though, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, think about slavery in the United States. I don't remember in all the reports I read back on that they got to, they just had bountiful food. So do you see how he messes with our minds? You didn't have bountiful food as a slave. <laughs> they gave you the rations. They gave you the leftovers. You gave me whatever. <laughs> yes, my sister. Mike here. Yes. They uh, wanted to go Daphne, back. Okay, but go ahead. I was coming here, but go ahead. <laughs> they, they wanted to go back to Egypt so they can be free. Mm. There were slaves where they were in the desert. They were maybe not, well, not maybe. They weren't in physical slavery, but they were in mental slavery because their minds were back there in, mm. in Egypt. That's number one. Number two, all the way until they got to the, promise, to the edge of the promised land, they were still in slavery. When they got among the, 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 the idol worshipers, they join in. That's slavery. They didn't realize that. They were not free people mm. mentally. Mm. So, Amen. My sister. When I heard, thought about your statement, um, I thought about with slaves, you, 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 you want to be, you're comfortable where you are. They wanted to wow. go back to comfort. Mm. And when you think about moving forward, you think about faith. And, you know, and if you don't have it, then you're just, you don't know what to do. And, and so they wanted to be where they felt safe. Mm -hmm. And I was being comfortable even, where they were. Isn't that interesting? Even though I say, we need to move forward, though, because we only have a few more minutes. So, Sister Bob, you know you're my girl. I need a quick comment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> True. We need to get out of the slavery. And then he took them out. Yeah. Uh, they want to go back. 
That's why we need to hear it over and over again, because our minds are messed up. <laughs> and we want the power of God to straighten out our minds. So they wanted to go back when actually go forward. Let's look at Deuteronomy 5 and talk about go going forward. But before we do that, let's think about this. On going backward, by wanting to go back, what effect is that on law and grace? Before we talk about going forward. By me saying, I want to go back. What effect is my statement of saying going back and then start taking actions? Remember, they took actions to go back. What does that do to law and grace, grace. when I do that? Grace. Just want grace only. <laughs> but do I even want grace, in a sense? You want the Lord to sustain you. Yeah. You want the Lord to still sustain your life, so you just want the grace, but you don't want to keep the law. Mm. So you break that relationship. Just let's keep, keep us under grace, Lord. We're not doing all that stuff you said, uh, but still yes. keep us alive and feed us and take care of us. Mm -hmm. Just like my sister behind me was saying, uh, and I talked to a gentleman who was talking about recidivism in prisons. A lot of guys don't want to get out of prison, mm -hmm. really, because it's secure. They don't have yes. to exercise faith. They don't All have right. to worry about the unknown. They know where the meals are coming from. They know mm -hmm. where they're going to sleep. Every day is the same. Good point. Nothing different. Uh -huh. And so it's a mental issue that becomes a person if they stay in prison too long. Getting mm -hmm. out is the unknown. What am I going to do out there? How am I going to? Yeah. Mm. Well, Lord, help us with our mental problems because that's, that's a mental problem that we have. Quick comment we want to talk about going forward. You know, they wanted it both ways. They wanted, they wanted the, the grace, but they didn't want to give, they, wanted, oh, they did not want to obey the law. Because remember, grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. They didn't want to pay the cost. So when we look at going forward, how do we now turn the topic of being a slave in Egypt to going forward? When I remembered I was a slave, not to go back and be a slave again, but now that I'm remembering a slave, how does that help me go forward? And what are my actions to be as I go forward remembering, remembering that I was a slave? Quick comment, my brother, because we're going to be yes. ending soon. If we go backward, we, we, we rely on ourselves. We're following our ways. But as soon as we decide to go forward, we put ourselves into God's law. We put ourselves into God's way. And there is no, we, we don't fall at this point. And I think that's what we often uh, uh, fail to understand. Mm -hmm. If we follow our, our own pathway, our own will, we will falter. Amen. But if we follow God, we'll be victorious. Amen. My sister. The thing about the law is as soon as it's broken, you become a slave to the brokenness. Mm -hmm. And the only way out is to allow him to take control. So allowing someone else to take control is scary. Why? It doesn't make any sense, but it is. So the only way out is to allow God to take control because we can't do right on our own. Let's go to the text, Romans 6, Romans 6, 16. Romans 6, 16. Actually, it's 15 to 18, but we're only going to look at verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. So which one do you want to obey? So now, if I remember our slave, can I have compassion? Do former slaves and servants have compassion on others? Come on, because you know we, uh, we can't go over, but we got that Matthew text, the Matthew 18 text about the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king who took account of his servants, forgave the servant, and then what the servant went back and did. Can we be compassionate? We know that's good verses as well. We only have a couple of minutes. I'm just reminding you all of it. But tell me about, can you be compassionate? You can look at the text later. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. That's that whole section. Can we be compassionate? Remember, you're remembering you were a slave before. But now we're free. Now that I'm free, how do I treat others? Because God has forgiven me. If we follow the example of Jesus... He was the most compassionate person on the planet, and he is our example in how we're supposed to treat others. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at just the first line. The Lord desired to guard the interests of servants. He commanded the Israelites to be merciful and to bear in mind that they themselves would be servants. Once we bear in mind what I used to be, then I'm not on harsh on someone else when I see it. 
In fact, I should understand even more, because I've been through it. I did it. I was doing it. I was there. So we're supposed to remember that. Now, as we end, it's not for your righteousness. So the law and grace. We're trying to get back to the place where Satan gave up. And now it's going to even be better. Someone told me it's going to be better. A comment of my brother here. So we want to be in that place. So how we get in that place? Is it because of I'm doing the right things? I'm, keep, I'm a law keeper. I'm a Sabbath keeper. Even though some of us are breaking some of the other ones, which means we're breaking the whole thing. <laughs> but <laughs> what are we doing here? Am I doing this for me? Is it for me? Now, in one sense, it's for me. But in one, one sense, it's not for me. It's our gratitude. Why did God say he did it for them? Come on, let's go to the text. Come on, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine own heart dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that, they, that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The wickedness of others. What did God promise to do about sin? It's going to be eradicated. He said he was going to eradicate sin, and we get the benefit from that. So it's not because of me. God is true to what he said he's going to do. He's going to eradicate sin. Then what else he said? Covenant. We've been, come on, we've been studying about the covenant, how powerful the covenant is, our relationship with him. Remember, basically, he's mine and I'm his. And you claim the same thing. He's mine and I'm his. So he made a covenant. He's going to keep it. So if somebody's going to break that covenant, who's, going to, who's it going to be? And, and let's ask God, not this time. Because we, we are hearing, we're learning, we're observing, we're hearkening, we're setting our hearts. Come on, remember the text we just all went through. Because of all those things in Deuteronomy, that Deuteronomy is trying to point us back to, not again. I'm not going to go back again. Not because of myself, but because of what? How are we going to do it, you all? Through Christ's strength. Through strength. Let's take a couple of comments and we got to end. My, my pastor here and uh, a hand here. We're going to take these two comments. We, we, we may not realize it, but um, this whole world and this whole controversy is for Jesus' sake. Whenever we pray, we end up for Jesus' sake. What are we talking about? God is using, not using us, but we are uh, trophies. We are exhibitions to the whole universe. Yes. And so uh, every one of us are important, every human being, for Amen. Jesus' sake. And this is what this is all about. Amen. And he was telling them, this is not about you. <laughs> this is not about you. It's about creation, my relationship, and everybody else in his creation. Come on, quick comment, brother. We're going to end. Go ahead. I'm just going to read this little clip from the bottom of Thursday's lesson. In short, despite your faults, your flaws, your stiff necks, the Lord is going to do a wonderful work for you and in you. Thus, as a result, the Lord commands you to obey him and his laws. The promise already has been given and delivered. Your works, your obedience, even if they were good enough, which they aren't, aren't the means of your salvation. They are instead the result. The Lord has saved you by grace. Now, with his law written in your heart and his spirit empowering you, go and obey his law. Amen. Let's stay away from the two errors. The error is thinking that I can trust in myself and what I do. And the second one is no less dangerous that I'm released from keeping the law. That means all of God's law. So for those who think the Ten Commandments are done away with, they are not and they're all important, they're all intertwined. So Satan grew bold in his rebellion. He claimed that angels needed no law. We know that's not true. This is what we're ending on. The whole law and grace thing is about God's love for us. He loves us so much that he gives laws to keep us safe and all the other things that we just stated, right? We need God's law because 
He so loved the world, he gave himself, right? When you look at all these texts, and we're not going to go through all of them, 2 John 1, 6, 6, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. 1 John 5, 2, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Jude 1, 21, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his mercy, he saved us from death. We were doomed to die. But because he paid the price for each and every one of us, we do not have to die. Now, because we now have life through him, we have power to keep it now. We didn't have power before, but through Jesus Christ, we can keep the commandments that keep us safe for eternity. So think of this lesson on law and grace about God's love for each and every one of us. His commandments are sure and true. He's not a man that should lie. He may keep all of them and the Sabbath day. So now, even us Sabbath keepers, let us do better by the power of God to keep the commandments of God, realizing what his mercy has done for us. We are saved by his grace, right? So now we can go forward. We can go forth in joy to others. And it's like, there's no problem with law. It's not grievous. In fact, it's a piece of cake. You know why? Because I'm not doing it. He's doing it for and through me. Amen. And then the joy that comes when the pressure is off of us, because he's taken all the pressure. He's taken all the stress. So anytime I fall, I give it over to him again, and I say, thank you, Lord. And we're going to get to the point of being perfect as he's perfect. Jesus is soon to come. We want to be there. Don't we want to be there? We want to be there. We want our family to be there. We want our church family, friends, enemies. We don't even want our enemies to go through what's going to happen for those who do not follow God. So we're going to end this Sabbath school lesson praying again for God to bring power upon each and every one of us that we, by his grace, will keep his law and share the good news of the gospel with others. We need what he has for us to protect us, to keep us safe. He loves us. The enemy wants to kill and destroy, but Jesus wants to save to the uttermost. So let us pray and ask God to do that. If you could pray for us, because you're up here. <laughs> Let us pray. Amen. Loving Father in heaven, we are so blessed <coughs> with this lesson today again. We pray for your grace, your love, your law to be embedded in our hearts that we will not sin against thee and that we will grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus Christ to die for us and is now in the most holy place interceding on our behalf. Thank you, Father, for the plan of salvation that was set in place long before this earth as a planet came into existence. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us today on this holy Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Continue to study, hear, listen, observe, hearken, and set your hearts. <laughs> so as we make the transition from Sabbath school to the divine hour, we are going to ask us to, uh, if we want to go to the bathroom, we could do so now, but those who are coming in can come in. We would like to start on time for our divine hour. And for those who are getting baptized, we are thankful that you are here on time so that we can just make this transition from Sabbath school to divine hour so that we can start our services on time and everything will run smoothly as we progress. Thank you very much for being here, and we will now make the transition from Sabbath school to the Divine Hour at this time. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. We need everybody to be praying um, while we're in the sanctuary. If you want to talk to somebody, talk to God. We want to ask that you would pray that God will pour out his spirit in the fullness of power and early and latter rain power so that souls will be converted and be saved. God bless. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Praise God for bringing us safely through another week. We're going to sing some hymns while everyone is getting ready.
Okay, our first hymn is going to be hymn number 508, Anywhere with Jesus. Hymn number 508. She's doing quite well now after we had that long conversation that morning. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God because he is still in the saving business. I got a, um, a text today um, from one of my friends, and they said that their um, daughter um, was admitted to the hospital because she tried to commit suicide. But there's hope. You see, with God, there's hope. And then she said that last night there was a struggle within her, and she gave up her life to Christ. You know, God is still in the saving business. I have another request. You know, when you do God's work, the devil is going to be upset and angry. But greater is he that is in you that is that than he that is in the world. So I have another friend, and I usually get these pamphlets. I don't know if you ever heard about these pamphlets, the life mission, um, whatever um, thing. Anyhow, they gave out pamphlets about the Sabbath and about um, the dead and the dead and all that stuff. They were in an accident. They were coming from camp meeting from I think it's Oklahoma or someplace over there, and she got in an accident. Her name is Patty Heinrich. And this morning, she told me that she's going to have surgery. Um, she broke two vertebrae in her back and her neck. Praise the Lord, she's alive. But the surgery or the procedure that's going to be done is putting cement and some, um, some whatever thing in the, in the back. So please pray that God will continue to be with her and give her courage because she's out in spreading the word of God. Amen. Amen. 
Happy Sabbath. It's always an honor to give God praise and glory and just to, um, just to say how thankful I am. This week, earlier this week, I was having a little bit of a, a pity party and just, you know, just kind of down and just like, Lord, you know, people not working like I want them to and all this stuff and just focusing on a little bit of me. I call it a pity party and I called a, a elder and just to get some counsel and encouragement and to my surprise, he just told me to go out and minister to others. And I was like, wow. And then start praying for other people. And I did exactly that. And I'm telling you, the Lord really, really blessed. I'm thinking that I'm going out and blessing people. And I came back home rejoicing and praising God. And um, I've just been on a high ever since. So when you guys want to have a pity party and focus it on yourself, go out and help someone. Go knock on the door. Go bless somebody else. Amen. While we're getting our testimonies ready, we're going to sing one stanza of another song. 216. So Tony Scarpino is the youth leader of Granite Bay Youth, which is amazing facts. And he was in the hospital because he was he had COVID, and he's out now. And so we're praising the Lord for that. Amen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Um, I just want to thank the Lord for safe travel mercies for me and my husband. And that today is my birthday, so I just want to thank the Lord for another year of life. Yes. Last Thursday, I was at work, 
and I was standing outside of a patient room that just came on the floor. And I could hear the patient just fussing. And the vibes were so negative, I was afraid to enter the room. Anyway, I made myself to her bedside. And I could hear she was saying, I'm not sure about this surgery. I'm not sure, I don't want to do it. And she was just fussing, she was, and I stood there for a while. And then I said to her, you know, I know a doctor you can talk to. He'll give you another opinion. She looked in my face and opened her eyes and she said, really? Um, who's the doctor? I said, his name is Jesus. I said to her, can I pray with you? And she just reached and just grabbed my hand like that and said, let's do it. And I prayed with her. She said she's going for an open heart surgery because she has blockage in her heart. And, and she's not sure of it. And she was crying. Anyway, they came an hour after and they took her. Then she came back about two and a half hours more. And I was passing by the room and she called me. She said, come here. And I went in. She said, your prayer heal me. My heart was cleared and I didn't have to do that surgery. She said, I just want to thank you for that prayer. I have a testimony. Yeah. I have a testimony. You know, it's so important to carry the joy and let it get to your face. Because I was in the bank yesterday. I was really frustrated because I was not able to get the transaction completed that I needed to complete. I went to another bank and then had to come back. And I just said, hmm, well, I'm just going to stay here until I get success for what I needed to have done. And I, w I was just cheery in my mind. I refused to let it to get to me. And I continued and finished my transaction. And uh, somebody walked beside me and said, happy Sabbath. You're a TV celebrity. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that crazy? Because you know what? If I had allowed the frustration that was inside of me, because I went to three places to get this done. I was, you know, taking care of something that somebody else needed uh, money for. So we have to always let the joy show. Yeah. At this time, we'll turn our hymnals to number 315.
you're able to please kneel with us. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer, thanking you, Lord, for another Sabbath, Lord, where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. May the showers of the early and latter rain come, for you said, where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst. We ask that you'll cast out every demonic spirit, every demonic, all demonic thinking, Lord, and any demonic agendas, Lord God, that will seek for this service to be a blessing. Be with those who are on social media watching us, and may you bless the apparatus, bless everything to work out well and we don't take for granted every week that we're just going to have a smooth transition but father in heaven we ask you lastly that you will remove all traces of the virus away from this place may nobody get sick lord in the name of jesus and we thank you for your presence and power this we ask in jesus name amen let us all stand together as we sing praise god from whom all blessings flow Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day, Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You may be seated. Good morning, saints. Good morning. We are so blessed to be here at the State Line Seventh day Adventist Church for to give God praise and thanks. This church we know is one of the church, very few churches in the world that preaches a straight end time message. And we are blessed to be here so that we can participate in it alive and well. Amen. And so we give God thanks for his blessings towards us. We have some special guests amongst us today. We would like you to stand if you are visiting with us from to the State Line Church for the first, second, or third time. Could you stand so that we can see you? We see that there are quite a few of us here today. We are not going to take your individual report, so to speak, or tell us where you're from, but we'd like to say welcome to the State Line experience. We are glad that you are here today, and we are blessed with your presence, and we hope that you will come again until you let State Line become your permanent church. Amen. Amen? So welcome, welcome, twice welcome. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Right now, we're going to um, just keep my family in prayer. just got news that one of my uncles passed away. My mother's oldest brother died in Honduras. So just keep my family in prayer. I got a chance to meet him for the first and last time. <sighs> anyway, just keep my family in prayer. But it's okay. It's all right, you know. All right. Right now, we're going to... Um, we're going to go a little bit early into our um, service. What we want to do is we want to do a dedication today for the Three Angels Bikers Club. Can they all come to the front? Amen. 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 We'd like to all the 
group, all the members of the three angels. And Brother Jerry, um, I don't know who the leader is. I assume Jerry's the leader, but I don't know. Maybe he's not, but we'll still let him speak. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And they have, the, they have the leather on, and they got the seal. I like this. You need to get me one. Make me an honorary member, even though I don't know how to ride a motorcycle. All right. It's called the Adventist Motorcycle Ministry. They have the seal of God on the side. I like to get that little button. I like that. All right. We're going to let the leader speak in just a minute. Oh, man. They got all of it right here. Amen. Woo, I like this. Got the three angels. Amen. We just praise God from whom all blessings flow. We'd like to let Jerry speak first, and then we'll let the leader speak. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting to speak, but uh, this is a group that we have here, um, Adventist Motorcycle Ministry, and uh, our leader there, Eddie, I will be passing the mic to him, like, right now. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to thank each one of you for giving us a little chance to, to let you know who we are. And Pastor, thank you so much, and we appreciate the dedication that's coming up. We, we need everybody's prayers. Uh, how many do not or never heard of AMM, Adventist Motorcycle Ministry. Raise your hands, please. All right. That's, that's good. I, well, it's not good, but it's going to be good because I'm going to let you know who we are. Uh, uh, AMM is Adventist Motorcycle Ministry. Uh, we, give the th we, we are doing our best to give the three angels' message to God's children out there in the world. Uh, there's so many of them. our motorcycles just for the fun of riding. We use our motorcycles as, as a means of reaching other people, and especially bike people. They're God's kids too. All right, and uh, we are recognized by the General Conference, so we're not, we're not an offshoot, we're not a weirdo group, all right? We are also recognized by, and a member of the ASI, so we're legit. Um, I would like to say we started this, this ministry started in 2008, five men in Florida. Some of these people were pastors. Um, pastor, I'm a pastor, so you're going to have to time me here. Uh, I, got, I got seven notes, man, but I ain't going to do them all, okay? I, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. I'm sorry, man. Anyway, 2008, five men in Florida started out with, now we are in 20 countries. Uh, there's five more countries, Portugal, Russia, Italy, uh, Macedonia, and Austria are trying to also become members of this movement or this ministry. Um, there's roughly 3,000 of us at this point, and it started out with five people and with a, with a mission, with a um, desire to reach out. Um, our main thrust or our main literature that we pa pass out is Great Controversy. And Steps to Christ. Uh, if you want to hold those up, the Steps to Christ is a motorcycle edition. It's real easy to go to people with motorcycles. If I went to a motorcycle person with a flower on the Steps to Christ, they'd go, hmm, I don't know, man. But if you get one with a motorcycle, at least you got a chance, okay? You got a chance of getting through. All right. And we also have uh, Mark Finley's 101, um, uh, um, one, one, uh, Live to 101. I wish I had time, man. We did some stuff at Sturgis this year. We had two huge, huge, uh, uh, what do you call them, statues of uh, Revelation chapter 17 and Daniel 7. And then we, we would, these are big monsters, and people come by and want pictures, and they go, we go up to them and say, do you know what those, what those beasts represent? No, no. Then we hand them the amazing facts it's so easy. It's just so easy to plant seeds. All right, I, I got to keep moving here. I'm, all right, there's been roughly 200 baptisms since this uh, uh, ministry started. But, you know, baptism isn't our main goal. It's planting seeds. We let the Holy Spirit do the work. He, he's given us a little bitty part to do, and he's helping us do that. Um, I'm going to end with this. Um, Ministry of Healing, page 73. I'm not going to read it. Go home and read it. Most of you probably already know it, but we use Christ's method alone. We're bringing true success in reaching the people. You know those five steps. Number one, he got out and mingled with the people. All right. 
and that's what we try to do. Um, let me see. Uh, the reason we use great controversy, and you can find this in Call Porter Ministry, I think it's 178, is Ellen White says this is the book above all books that she wanted passed out. And that's what we, we're, we're trying to follow what God says is the best way to reach people and the best books to get in these people's hands. If you have any questions, talk to any one of us after church. And if you want to join, we have applications. And in, oh, so I can, I can get the, I can get the yes. leather thing? Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to join. I like that. <laughs> Amen. Well, what we want to do is, on behalf of the State Line Seven Day Adventist Church, we want to donate to you a box of the book National Sunday Law. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Um, just want to give you a test. Yes. Go ahead. Go and help her cut and split wood at her house. Amen. Amen. Just want to let you know that um, this is a gift to us, to you. Um, a friend of mine online on social media donated to me personally and sent 2,000 national Sunday laws to my house. Yes, and so just want to let you know. Uh, there was a gentleman, our, our anonymously donated great controversies. There was pallets. I don't know if there's 12 to 18 pallets of great controversy. But how were we going to get those great controversies to our hub in Houston, Texas? A trucker come along and said, I'll take them for nothing. All of those great controversies. Now, er every one of our chapters now gets eight to ten boxes of books. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So what we're going to do, we're going to just dedicate them in prayer right now as they ask. Brother Barnett, can you say the dedicatory prayer for me, please? Yes, it does. Right. Amen. Go ahead. As far as possible, let us pray. Let us pray. Our loving Father, God in heaven, we know that your work takes different formats. And you reach people where they are in their most, most unique situations. And you send people to reach others who may have the same characteristics, the same influence, the same lifestyle. And for this biker's ministry, Father, it takes a unique set of people under the unction of the Holy Spirit with wisdom from on high to know whom to speak to and when. And so, dear Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we are asking for the Holy Spirit to rest mightily upon every member here in this congregation with us today and those in other countries and other parts of the United States as well. We pray for this ministry, Father, that you will bless it as they have said to plant seeds for we know that the Holy Spirit is the one who will make disciples of all men eventually. Thank you, Father, for allowing them to be here with us today so that others can understand what this ministry is all about. And we thank you, Father, for the part we all can play in the plan of salvation, and especially this biker's ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. We, can, we continue to, to reach out in many various ways, and we just praise God for the biker's ministry. Amen. Right now, it's time for, um, for a, a, a good state line tradition that we're doing on a very continual basis. We're having a baptism again. Amen. Amen. And we have um, the first person I want to bring up is my dear friend, uh, dear friend of state line. She drove all the way from Kansas City, Missouri to get baptized today. Can you come up, my sister? And we're going to ask for your husband to come up too. Amen. Amen. Come on up. Amen. I want you to, amen. I want you to give us your name and um, and tell us what brought you here today. And I know you're here with your loving, charming, faithful husband. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> um, happy Sabbath. Um, I came here today because I had been on YouTube, um, just, just watching YouTube. And I came across Stateline SDA Church. 
Oh, I'm sorry, my name is Rhonda Brown. And um, I came across Stateline uh, SDA Church Sunday Law Update, and that piqued my interest. So I started watching. And you were comparing the spirit of prophecy to the Bible and to everything prophetic that was happening in the world. And I knew that I was not ready for the time of trouble that was coming up on the land. I was living in a backslidden state and I am ready to rededicate my life to Christ. Stay dedicated to Christ and I wanna meet him in the air. And that's my reason for coming down here. And I know that you have been baptizing people and I, just, I told my husband, I have got to get down here to this church to get baptized. And here I am. Amen. And as you know, beside, beside every good woman is a good man. Anything you want to say, Elder? Just happy to be here and thank you for the welcomes. Amen. As you continue to stand, we have our second candidate, my dear sister. Come on up. Amen. Give us your name and tell us what brought you here. Come on closer. Come over this way. Amen. Um, my name is Deborah Matthews. I'm <clears throat> I am a Seventh Day Adventist. Um, I was going to a church um, just down the street, Central, and a friend of mine invited me to Three Angels uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church, and I went there. And I was blessed, and I accident. I actually left the state to do something else, and I found out from her that the church was no longer functioning. <laughs> and so um, I just didn't know what to do. So anyway, the Lord led me to different places. And I came here about two months ago. I was only supposed to be here for a few days. Two months later, I'm here. And um, the Lord just impressed me to come to State Line. And he had told me, um, like, maybe like a couple of weeks before that to um, be, be rebaptized because of the state of um, the church that I might have been a member of. So <laughs> to make a long story short, I just praise God that I'm here and I'm just thankful that um, he's still working with us. So Amen. praise God. Amen. And um, our last person is none other than our own sister Iona Gunn. Amen. I'd like to ask for her husband to come up. Well, there he is. Okay. All right. Usually I let the white, the, the person speak that's getting baptized, but this time I'll let Oscar speak. Um, I heard the other night, the other day, she wanted to get um, rebaptized, and um, I talked to her on Thursday, and I meant to call you back, but I apologize, I forgot. <laughs> so this morning I woke up, I said I need to call Sister Gunn and see if she's getting, if she still wants to get baptized, because we was, because um, as you know, she's dealing with a certain situation, and we need you to keep her in prayer continuously. And so we was able to work things out, even though she was not planning on it. Today, we worked out how we're going to do the baptism, amen, in a way that will be f best for her. We're going to do it today. My wife is like, no, she's going to not, not next week. We're going to do it today, amen. amen. Brother Oscar, anything you want to say? Yes, um, it's been a trying time here lately. It's all right. God's got me. I trust in the Lord. He is my keeper. He gave me birth so that I can know him, the creator God. He wants to repopulate us, heaven with us, from those angels that fell to the earth. So all we got to do is walk the walk. I'm so grateful that I know him. Amen. And I do this as an example, not just for my life, but for my brothers that were baptized in the Adventist church that left, to let them know this is the way, walk ye in it. Amen. This is the road to heaven. Amen. I thank God for his grace and his mercy that has been with me every step of the way. And I know he didn't bring me this far to leave me. And he brought me here to be an example. And I pray that I hold up the light Hold out your light, you heaven-bound soldiers. Hold them out for the world to see that you love God and he loves you. Amen. Amen.
Amen. You know, Amen. I, I um, I've been holding this cry in for quite a while. Oh, that's all right. And um, what she said is true. Like I said, what she's going through, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, because not not only does she go through it, but I go through it sometimes harder than her. And so with her wanting to get rebaptized, I know that she has made her call in election show Amen. with God, and she's asked for forgiveness and yes. cleared the slate. Yes. And so this is like a testimony to the world and to the Lord that whatever his decision is, that is well with her soul. Amen. Amen. As you continue to stand, we're going to ask for any friends, church family and friends that want to stand with our baptismal candidates that wants to come to the front. This is a state line tradition. You can come up to the front. Okay. Amen. Nobody's not going to get sick. <laughs> Amen. All right. And brother, um, El El Elder Barnett, can we just say one more prayer for healing for her as we pray? Matter of fact, I'll pray the prayer for the Holy Spirit for them, Brother Barnett. And Elder Barnett, you can just pray for her healing. Amen. We know what Sister um, Gunn has been going through. And I thank God for your strength, my sister. Sometimes the devil wants you to be sad. But it's something when somebody's going through a trial. And that their spirits are up. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Why don't you bring them a little closer so we can see, so everybody can see, because we got the whole church up here. <laughs> All right. We're going to ask you these questions, and upon agreeance, say yes. Do you believe that there's one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co eternal persons? Do you accept the, have you accepted the death of Jesus Christ as your atoning sacrifice for your sins? And do you believe that through faith in his shed blood that you are saved from sin and his penalty? Do you renounce the world and his sinful ways? And have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you of your sins and given you a new heart? Amen. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary? And do you accept this promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? And do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will? Is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day as the Sabbath of the Lord and memorial of creation and the seal of the living God? Yes. Do you look forward to the soon return of Jesus as your blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality? And as you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to his loving salvation and by life and by word to help others to be ready for this event? Do you accept the biblical teachings of spiritual gifts? And do you believe that the gift of prophecy is manifested through Sister White's writings is one of the identifying marks of the Remnant Church? Yes. Do you believe in church organization? And is it your purpose to support the church by your tithes and offerings and by your personal effort and influence? Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and will you honor God by caring for it? Avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcohol, from the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco, and from the use and manufacturing in narcotics and other drugs. Yes. Knowing and understanding the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, is it your purpose by the grace of God to fulfill his will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles? Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion? And do you so desire to be rebaptized today as a public expression of your faith in Christ and the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Do you accept and believe that the Seven Day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into this fellowship? Yes. Amen. Is there a motion that. 
Amen. <laughs> okay, well, not that they're becoming members today. Can we just, um, will, we, will we support these three candidates? Yes. Amen. As they make their decision. We're going to pray right now for the Holy Spirit. Brother Oscar, I'd like for you to put your hands on your wife. Um, Elder Creech, put your hands on my dear sister right here, and I'll put my hands on her, and we're going to pray. Yes. I'll pray for the power of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to pray for Sister Iona, and we're going to pray for God's healing yes. over yes. her. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer. We lay hands on these three candidates. We ask you simply to seal them with the Holy Spirit of promise. We believe that you have sealed them with the Holy Spirit of promise, and we thank you that you have sealed them with the Holy Spirit of promise. And as the Bible says, they are sealed unto the day of redemption. Yes. So, Father God in heaven, may they receive the early and latter rain and everything that's imperfect in their lives may be removed away. And upon their baptism, Lord God, may they go forward in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Elder Barnett. Loving Father in heaven, we just want to come again together as your people united by the same faith, the same desire to be saved through the power of the Holy Spirit, to dedicate these candidates and ourselves to thee afresh, O Lord, to thee. We pray for your, your anointing to be upon every one of us. Yes. And we pray in a special way, Father, for special healing for Sister Iona Gunn. Yes, Lord. That you will, Father, remove, according to your will, all the cancer cells from our body. Yes. Every atom and molecule and particle that yes. is trying to take her apart, Lord. We know that in the name of Jesus, you are the miracle working God, and nothing is impossible for yes, thee. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We must have and exercise that faith yes, Lord. that can move mountains yes. right now as a people. And we are claiming, Father, that your will be done in Sister Gunn's life Thank right you, now. And that you will transform and strengthen and remove, her, Lord God. And heal and secure and strengthen and recover. Yes. For nothing is impossible for Yes, you. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us and for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Let's sing, Take Me to the Water. Sister Brown, we thank God for your dedication. We thank you for just coming down and choosing this church to be baptized at. So we baptize you now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Just kneel. Sister Deborah Matthews, because of your dedication and your desire to rededicate, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name.
Sister, eye on a gun because of your um, love for Jesus. I just want to let you know we love you here at the State Line family. Yes. And we're going to continue to support the guns. And we're going to believe God. And God has the last say, not the doctor. Yes. Not even cancer has the last say so. But God himself has the last say so. I want to thank you for your faith, Sister Gun, because you know what? Sometimes when you're going through stuff like this, you may feel sad like this is the end, but it's not. It's not. And we're going to um, go forward in faith and believe God. Continue to believe God for a miracle. Sister, I own a gun. We now baptize you in the name of the Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Sister Baylock, do we have any other baptism candidates this month or next month? Do we have any others? Okay, we have some, okay, we have some baptism candidates. And so they're lining up. So, you know, we're keeping this pool wet. But there may be somebody who says, look here, I can't wait till December. I got to do it now. And if there's somebody who's watching online, you can contact us. But if there's somebody in this room that says right now, I'd like to be a part of the next baptism, whether it be this month or next month, just raise your hand right now. Is there one who wants to be baptized? Just raise your hand. Going once, going twice. And if you're not able to raise your hand, if you need some time to think about it and you want to talk with me uh, at the service, please feel free to do so. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for this baptism service. And we want to thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering. In Jesus' name, amen. And before we go on, Brother Barnett, I've talked to Elder Barnett about this. We want to just ask those who are making announcements, those who are doing children's stories, we need you to keep it within a limited time frame. Do the time, amen. We want to get out of here at 3 o'clock, amen. Amen. All right, God bless. Amen. <laughs> so, Sister Junan. Blessed Sabbath, church family, and those viewing online as well. Blessed Sabbath to you all. So I just have a few announcements from the Children's Ministries Department. While we're getting... Um, the slide queued up. Um, just to let you know that I am the um, leader of the Children's Ministries Department. It is a new ministry here at State Line because someone saw a need. Um, I was elected to be the leader, and it is in its infancy state. So we know that infants don't run, they don't jump. Um, they're not even crawling yet when they're just born. This is just born. So, um, but we're moving and we're alive. We have a team and we're ready to work. And I'm hoping we can get going, but just say a prayer for us that. Um, there we go. And that's the Children's Ministries logo. Um, you're gonna be seeing it up in a bulletin board in the fellowship hall very soon. And on that bulletin board, we're going to be having youth and children's ministries. Children's ministries is 0 to 14 years old, so we do programming for children of that age group. Next Sabbath, okay, 
Next Sabbath, actually this week, Youth and Children's Week of Prayer, that's going to be done in your respective homes. Encourage your children and your young people to spend more time in prayer this week. You can do devotional readings with them as well. And on November 20th, that is next Sabbath, we're having a consecration for the ministry. So that's the leadership, anyone who would like to volunteer with us. Next hour, we're going to have volunteer application forms. You will be interviewed. This is something that we're going to be doing it God's way, the right way, in a way that we can protect God's children. So everyone, all children, 0 to 14, we're wearing black and white. The parents as well and the children's ministries team as well. Anyone who would like to volunteer, come see one of the, yes, wear black and white. And it will be done during, just like it was done today. We'll come up front and we'll be consecrated to God for ministry. Um, December 11th, hymns and scripture songs at the nursing home up the street. And on December 18th, hymns and scripture songs at front of Piggly Wiggly's and in front of the police precinct up the road. So those, those are just a few things we're doing to start here. Next year, we'll be older and we'll be crawling. So stay tuned for more. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Uh, real quickly for Brother uh, Blaylock comes up, I just have a few announcements. Uh, one, uh, please come by the uh, Sister Burton, uh, the Bessie Island Prep School tomorrow, Sunday, at 1, to help with the cutting and splitting of logs, amen? <laughs> so uh, she really needs help, right? Amen? <laughs> amen. And, and also, um, Sister Burton needs to meet with all choristers immediately after church, meeting right here in front of the piano. So this is very important. Immediately after church, all choristers. Thank you. And Brother Billy Lock. Happy Sabbath, church. I hope all is doing, or everyone is doing well. And as we've seen, we're going to keep Pastor all wet. Amen. amen? Can I get an amen? amen? It's all about soul winning, brothers and sisters. It's what it's all about. This is what the church is supposed to do. Can I get a witness? Amen. All right. Now I'm going to continue reading this book. Testimony to ministers and gospel workers, because we are gospel workers, and we need to work in order to build up God's kingdom. Can I get a witness? Amen. And I'm taking this reading from uh, Danger in Adopting Worldly Policy, and the uh, subtitle is Need of Spiritual Discernment. I said to them, you cannot do this. The control of these large interests cannot be vested wholly in those who make it manifest that they have little experience in the things of God and have not spiritual discernment. The people of God throughout our ranks must not, because of mismanagement on the part of erring men, have their confidence shaken in the important interests at the great heart of the work which have a decided influence upon our churches in the United States and in foreign lands. If you lay your hand upon the publishing work, the great instrumentality of God to place your mold and superscription upon it, you will find that it will be dangerous to your own souls and disastrous to the work of God. It will be a great sin in the sight of God as was the sin of Uzzah when he put forth his hand to steady the ark. There are those who have entered into other men's labors and all that God requires of them is to deal justly, to love mercy and walk humbly with God, to labor consciously as men employed by the people to do the work entrusted to their hands. Some have failed to do this 
as their work testifies, whatever may be their position, whatever their responsibility, if they have as much authority as had Ahab, they will find that God is above them, that his sovereignty is supreme. No confederacy should be formed with unbelievers. Neither should you call together a certain chosen number who think, you, think as you do or who will say amen to all that you propose while others are excluded who you think will not be in harmony. I was shown that there was great danger of doing this. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I would, should not walk in the way of this people saying, say ye not a confederacy to do all them to whom the people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their, their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. To the law and to the testimony, if they not speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. The world is not to be our criterion. Let the Lord work. Let the Lord's voice be heard. This is a charge, brothers and sisters. Let us be about our Father's business. Have a happy Sabbath. We also, can you hear me? We also had a social at the personal ministry's department sponsored a social at the Corris House last Sunday. So we had a very good time. So the personal ministry's department is not just about the spiritual aspect only. The social aspect is also important. And the servant of the Lord says that we should use socials to save. So that was one of our purpose, purposes for being there. We had a very good time at the Curry's. Yes. We had a bonfire. We had plenty of food and we had a good fellowship. Yes. So that was also important for us to be there. Amen. Any other announcements? El personal ministries? Yes. Health and temperance? Sorry. Just a couple of announcements. We do have a lot of um, fun here at State Line. Yes, if you guys, Sunday, we had a canning class as well before the bomb fire, and that was awesome too. We learned how to can, and I was so confident that I went back home that night, and actually I canned um, apples what I learned during that class. If you missed it, don't worry, because we're having another one December 12th. Amen. This is a little flyer, and it tells you exactly what you need. And if you don't have the items and you want to come and just observe and take notes and so forth to go back, that's fine too. But you have an opportunity to, yes, to, do, to work right along and to learn, okay? So this is Sunday, December 12th, okay? So it gives you a lot of time to prepare. I want to tell you, last night we have, we've been having a study. This is our second night that we met, and um, it's preparation for the final crisis. It is awesome. I'm telling you, the devil was busy last night, though. I mean, we had trouble on the line, had trouble on Zoom, but we're going to do it again because this is the most important work. This is the foundation. And I'm going to encourage those that are on Zoom, participate. This is not a lecture type of study. This is for us to interact with each other. So we want you to read your books. We want you to um, read the, um, the workbook and do the workbook so that you can come and we can dialogue and that we can just dig in deep. I was so inspired by this. I, I know I look sleepy probably because I work, woke up early this morning, had my time with the Lord, and I was texting people, are you awake? Are you awake? And um, the ones I said, Lord, whoever called me first, that's who I'm going to um, have and finish off this. So two people at different times called, and we just talked about this book and talked about the things that's in it. And the first chapter that we talked about was Laodicea. And um, I didn't think that we got into it enough yesterday, um, last night, but this is what we're going to do, okay? So come prepare. It's every Friday, and I have a flyer, one flyer left, and it goes all the way to the... Um, 
to January 28th. And we all, we are, you, you guys already know Brenda Hill. She's the one that wrote the work, workbook and she's the one that's leading out. So please participate. Um, the next thing and the last thing I want to talk about is for um, tomorrow. So we're going to join our forces together because I heard the announcement of, um, of uh, Sister Burton's coming to her house, let me slow down, <laughs> and um, helping her chop wood. And Brother Greg, you know, we had already talked about that he was going to do a training for the men, but it's not just focused for the men because it's also for the women. Can you stand up? And I'm, I'm going to put him on the spot. He's the one that does all the work around the church. So if you see an add-on building or an add-on facility, if you see the walls done, if you see the kitchen, you know, expanded, anything, he is the man. He knows his stuff. And he does other jobs, too. <laughs> you, you guys, y'all know I'm right. So it's like, well, why can't he teach the men? And I'm thinking maybe we're not having men volunteers because they don't know what to do. And so, but anyway, there's women that need to know the basics around the house, too, right? So what we decided to do is um, we're going to meet at um, Sister um, Burton's house, and um, we're going to meet at 1 o'clock. We're going to kick that off, and we're going to cut that wood so everybody show up, men and women. And then he's going to do a basic class on stuff that we need to know. Every kind of maintenance around your house. This all sorts of maintenance that you will encounter around the house. I'm experienced. I know the troubles that you will face, but uh, it's for ladies also. You you need to you need to learn how to turn a ranch yourself. You know. So anyway, it, this this is for everyone, and and it's really uh, basic stuff that you're gonna need around the house, and you won't have to call nobody to help you do something. You can do it yourself. And the best part of it is, it's free. Amen. It's free. But the other, the icing on the cake is that you're going, you're going to get a meal. Now, come on now. <laughs> if you had Miss Burton's cooking, you know what I'm talking about. So please come out. Let's have some fun. And you do, you do need to take advantage of this because I didn't get it free. Amen. Amen. Did you guys hear that? I just want to echo that. He's going to share his talent. He's going to share his education free. Amen. So anybody that have student loans, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Amen. Amen. And very quickly, I would like to just share a testimony of healing. Amen. A lot of times we don't share the good news, but I just want to share the good news, brethren. A couple of months, a couple of weeks ago, I shared a testimony of the cancer that has been in my body for quite a while. And I've gotten calls from countries, different people from different countries have been calling, saying that, you know, the testimony is, and here in America, testimony that you shared was very inspiring. But I would just like to add also that along with the cancer, I've been suffering very severely and intensely from hemorrhoids. And we know that can be very, very painful. I had surgery on this about three weeks ago, Tuesdays, three Tuesdays ago. And I've been recovering from that periodically with some amount of pain still. But for the past three days, somebody came on the prior line Friday evening, Friday morning, Friday morning, and they were saying specifically, I mean, we get, I get this all the times. But the person was saying, you know, I've been praying for you, Elder Barnett, specifically. And I don't remember who it was because, you know, the prayer line goes all over, all, all over the world. And somehow I just felt that sensation. I, I don't like to use that word, but I tell you what I'm feeling. In my body, when the person was actually telling or giving their experience that uh, testimony that they were praying for me specifically, and Sister, Sister Gunn as well. So I just want to give God thanks that for the past three days, I've had three days of three pain-free days. And 
I'm feeling very good. This is one of the best days that I've been feeling so far. And the oncologist has determined that there was cancer in my uh, colon, pancreas, uh, spleen, in the blood, in the bones. I mean, different, different places that, I mean, some, it should have taken out somebody already. Many people already, but sometimes I think about my mortality. Why is it that I am here and others are gone? So, I need to take this more seriously. I recognize that God has given us, or given me, extended life for a reason. Amen. And I just want to share this, that the Lord says that I'm in Psalms, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, O Lord, for I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. And Sister Leontine said something on the prior line a couple of weeks ago. She says that the praise part should come first. And I was thinking about that, and I said, the way the sentence is, I'm very word structured. The way the words are, are structured, the praise, although it's mentioned last, should come first. Amen. That we should praise God Amen. for his blessings upon us. Amen. So I really want to give God praise and thanks for his goodness towards me. And as I've said, this is like three pain-free days that I'm experiencing. And I didn't have to take any tablets or pills or potions or lotion to get the pain away. I'm here this morning pain-free, and I just want to give God praise for that. And thanks for that. Prior's work, saints. And the prayers of faith, God is the one who is doing the healing. The surgeon does the surgery, but God gives the, surgery, the surgeon wisdom. But God in himself is the one who does the healing. So I just want to give God praise. And I just like, hallelujah, really. And give God thanks. Amen. I just want to give God thanks. One of the things that we are praying about too, you notice that my hair is getting grayer. Our children, yes. our children, yes. our children, yes. they grew up in the faith, they grew up in the faith, Pathfinders Club, Adventist School, the old works, but they are gone out there. Yes. We have two boxes here, this one, specifically for our children, specifically for our children in the church, grandchildren, stepchildren, great-grandchildren, we want you to put your prayer request in there because our children, ah, oh, our children, brethren, it's like a burden. And I, I don't, sometimes I don't even know what to say to them because these, they are adults now, married and have their doctorate degree and big degree and they feel that they know everything. But our prayers, we need to just keep praying for our children. Somebody says that before probation closes, our children will be coming back into the faith. So we need to pray for our children, brethren. Thank you, Pastor, for just allowing me with this extra time to speak this morning. So at this time, Elder, we just continue our service. Amen. Thank you, Elder. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We can all stand for our opening song, Trust and Obey 
For the scripture reading is coming from Matthew chapter 26, Matthew 26, verse 46 through 49. Matthew 26, 46 through 49. Matthew 26, 46 through 49. And I'll read. Raise, rise, uh, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betrayeth me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and staffs, for the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayeth him gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kiss him. All right. You may kneel if you're able. We're going to have our prayer time. Father and our friend, as always, Lord, we thank you for giving us the blessing to be able to be here in fellowship one with another. Yes. Father, we thank you for all the many things that you have given us throughout this week, Lord, mainly life. Yes. Father, you have given us peace, Lord. You have given us faith. Yes. You have given us courage and determination. Mm -hmm. Father, you have given us resilience. Lord, you have given us uh, just a, a, a desire to want to know you more. Amen. Father, you have given us so many things. We can't name all of these blessings. But we want to thank you for them. And Father, now we're asking that you send your Holy Spirit to be with us. Father, we pray that you search our heart and try us, Lord, and see if there be any wicked way within us. Father, we pray that you bring it to our attention even now, Father. That we may repent of it, Lord, and that our souls may be clean. That when you speak through your manservant today, Lord, it may enter into clean hearts, Father. And Lord, we pray that you give us ears that we may hear. That the word that is spoken, Lord, to us, Father, that not only shall it be received, that it may bring forth much fruit. We pray that our lives are changed after this, Lord. 
that we put in practice whatever we learn today that even if you spare our lives to see another Sabbath, we may have a testimony Amen. that we heard something today and our lives was changed by putting it into practice. Yes. Yes. Father, I thank you for the testimony from Elder Barnett, Lord. Yes. It's encouraging, Father, as people are here and people who are watching online and who may watch the video sometime in the future, Lord, who may be dealing with similar things, Father. To know that we have a God in heaven that hears us. Yes. And that we have a God in heaven that cares about what we're going through. Amen. But most of all, we got a God in heaven that can actually do something about it. Yes. And Lord, we also lift up our sister gun, our dear sister gun, Lord. Father, I thank you for blessing her to have the faith that she has. Lord. Yes. 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 Father, I know that's encouraging for me to see and I'm sure for others. I realize, Lord, no matter what your will may be, if I'm faithful and she's faithful, we'll be together in eternity, Lord. Amen. So, Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit continue to increase her faith, Lord, and her husband, Father. Amen. That no matter what happens, Lord, your name may be glorified. Yes. And not just them, Lord, but all of us who may be struggling and dealing with different sicknesses or issues or whatever it may be, in this room or those who are watching online. Father, I just pray that your grace just help us, Lord, to continue to seek after you, Father. We bless you, Father, and we pray that you continue to bless us. And most of all, Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. And also, Father, one more. I want to pray for Brother Anderson. I know he may be watching online that you may restore his health as well and, and allow him to increase in health, Father, that he may come. Uh, and worship with us in, in live person, Father, by your grace. We ask all this in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 At this time, our deacons will come forward to receive of today's tithes and offering. pray dear father in heaven we ask in a special way that you will anoint these tithes and offerings that as they be distributed for your work it will reach hearts and minds that others can come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord forgive us of our sins we pray and bless bless us as we go forward now in Jesus name we pray amen Today, the North America Division, along with the General Conference, would like to emphasize our radio ministries. If I say voice of prophecy, quite a lot of you will know what voice of prophecy is all about. And La Voz de Esperanza, we know that's a Spanish version of the voice of prophecy. We also have, as a church, Adventist World Radio. And Adventist World Radio reaches people in their native tongue in their native language over 90 years ago the adventist preacher started an adventist preacher started a radio ministry called the voice of prophecy the year was 1929 and his name was hms richards we are familiar with that name right back then Radio was live. Any mistake you made, it was heard. 
It, they, these, these recordings were, these ministry was not recorded. Everything was done live. In front of a microphone. At a, and this was a weekly program that was started. During World War II, the Voice of Prophecy became the first religious coast-to-coast -coast broadcast across North America on MBN, Mutual Broadcasting Network, MBN. The same year, 1942, it launched the first Adventist Bible Correspondence School. So we know that along with the Voice of Prophecy came the Correspondence School along with that. And La Voz de Esperanza started around that same time as well. That's a Spanish version of the Voice of Prophecy. Both of these Adventist radio ministries continue broadcasting around the world, even today. They form part of the Adventist media ministry owned and operated by the North America Division under the sponsorship of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. They operate in over 70 different languages today and different countries today, reaching 1.2 million people weekly. That's like over 15 million people per year. 93% of Americans listen to radio compared to 88% of those of us who watch television. So radio is still the number one source by which we get our information. The Voice of Prophecy and La Voz de Esperanza uses radio to proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. They are leading people to accept Jesus as their personal savior. And they are asking us to give liberally this week to the radio ministries that are incorporated into the Seventh-day Adventist Church along with Adventist World Radio. And as I've said, Adventist World Radio reaches people, people groups in their native language. And we just want to give God thanks to know that our funds are being used in various ways to reach different people groups and different medium or different aspects or different ways. Today we have Zoom and YouTube and all the internet thing, but radio is still one of the most effective ways of reaching people where we cannot go. So we just want to give God thanks for radio ministry. Still waiting on our deacons, but Adventist Royal Radio, as I've said, reach people groups in in their native tongue. Let us all stand and we give God. We give the uh, God. We give the but I know. We give the but I know. Whatever is baby. Father and our God, we pray that your anointing will be upon these funds, that as they are faithfully returned to thee, that they will be faithfully used to hasten your coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time we'll have our children's story. children that come up this morning all children that includes you <laughs> come on good morning boys and girls 
Good morning, boys and girls. I know it's cold outside, but it's still a beautiful morning. The sun is shining, and the Lord woke you up this morning. It's a beautiful morning. It's Sabbath. Amen? And good morning, saints of the Most High God. How are you all this morning? Well, this morning, I have a little story I want to tell you about. Something really special is getting ready to happen very soon, and sooner than what we realize. But before we do our story, let's bow our heads so that we can have a word of prayer and invite the Holy Spirit. You want to scoot down so that they can have some room to sit? Yes, that'll be fine. Thank you. All right, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, my Jehovah God, here we are before your throne, Father, asking you, first of all, to forgive us of all of our sins, our shortcomings, anything that we may have done or said or done throughout this week, throughout this morning, throughout this very hour. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. It's a high day today because it's your Holy Sabbath. And not only that, Lord, Someone rededicated their life to you today. And the angels of heaven are rejoicing because of this one sinner that is saved today by your grace. We ask you, Lord, to come into our hearts. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to come, to lead God and direct us, Lord, in the way that you would have us to go. And we thank you, Father, for hearing. May the children gain a blessing from the story that is told today in Jesus' name. Amen. He's coming. He's coming again. Do you get excited, boys and girls, when someone comes to take you to a special place? Yes, me too. Soon, a very special person will come for you and for me and for all of us. He will take us to his home. God's children on earth know that baby Jesus, born so long ago, grew to become a man. They knew he was the one who died to save them. They know he has gone to heaven to be with God. And they know he will come to earth again. God's children on earth know it will happen. And it will happen very soon. Watch for my coming, Jesus said. There will be troubles on the earth. There will be wars. And there will be earthquakes. But do not worry. I am coming back to get you and take you home to heaven. Yes, boys and girls, there, will, there have been earthquakes in the world. And there have been wars and people talking about war. There have been many kinds of troubles going on all over the earth. There have been floods, fires, people fighting, people hurting one another, stealing children. All kinds of evil and wicked things have been going on in the world. All kinds of diseases, but we know that these things are going to happen. They know Jesus is coming to take them home. When I come to get you, everyone in the world will see me, Jesus said. I will come like bright lightning that flashes. I will come with clouds of bright I will come with clouds of bright angels, and they will gather you up to me to meet me in the air. God's children keep their eyes on the sky. Nobody knows which day he will come, but all God's children know that he's coming, boys and girls. All the angels in heaven know it too. They know Jesus is going back to earth to get his children and bring them home to heaven to live with him one day forever. 
Not one of the angels knows exactly which day or the hour that this special day will be, but they know that on that day, the great trumpet of God will sound, and they will go with Jesus to gather his children from one end of the world to the other. The excited, the angels are so excited and are waiting. They practice the welcoming songs they will sing for all of God's children. God's children are waiting and waiting. Do you think he's really coming, boys and girls? Oh, yes, yes, of course he's coming. Jesus never breaks his promises. So keep watching the sky. Suddenly the special day will come. It's time. The time is here. Jesus will shout. Will, Jesus' shout will ring throughout all of heaven. Let's go get God's children. The angels will cheer. They will clap. They will sing. They will dance for joy. It will be the noisiest day ever. But it will be the happiest day ever for God's children. Jesus and the angels will speed through the air to this earth. Shining clouds of angels will surround Jesus as he comes through the sky. He's coming. He's coming. God's children will shout, yes, Jesus is coming. He said that he would. And he is. And the angels will hurry to gather together all God's children to meet Jesus in the clouds. It will be the happiest day ever, boys and girls, mommies and dads, brothers and sisters. It will be a wonderful day when Jesus comes to take us all home. Revelations 1, 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Isn't that wonderful news? To know that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, is soon coming and we're finally going to see him in the clouds of glory. That is going to be the most wonderful, the most happiest and joyful day of our lives. We will finally go home to live with God forever. Now, who wants to give us prayer this morning? Okay, come on. Come. Here, you can do it from there if you choose. Let you pray in just a second. Go ahead. Thank you for God to give my my people. Thank you for God to just just be be with us. Thank you for God to stay here. Thank you for God to just stay. Amen. 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 Okay, I think he's still a little bit shy. But just before you go back to your seats, boys and girls, I have a little something for each one of you that Sister Burton wants you all to have. Here you go. And as you get your little book, you can go back to your seats quietly. Here you go. glorious Sabbath day. Um, though the weather is cooler, we thank God that we're able to be somewhere where it's warm. Amen. And I want to thank um, Brother and Sister Curry for um, allowing us to come to their house last week for a bonfire. And as I was standing around the bonfire, 
um, just two things. Um, first thing is, I'm like, man, the day is going to come where we're going to be out the, like this with no place to sleep. We're going to be agonizing in prayer because the hour of darkness will come. And so we just got to just take um, advantage of this time that we have together. And what we want to do, I'd like to ask for Pastor David Donaldson to come up to the front. And the second thing was, um, uh, we have Brother Pastor David Donaldson, a good friend of mine, him and his wife and his daughter is here. And, I'll, um, and Brother Elder Barnett, can you come stand, please? And we was able to sit down and talk. Come on, come on, don't be shy. He's a pastor. Amen. want to let you know that um, Brother David Donaldson, um, graduate of Southern Adventist University, um, pastored in the Mountain View Conference of Seven Day Adventists, and now talked with the Gulf States Administration, and Gulf States is now taking him on as a volunteer, as a lay, a lay assistant pastor of the State Line District. Amen. Amen. And, and me and Brother Barnett, um, he'll start next Sabbath. Amen. So he'll be assisting us and we sat down and talked, and we'll be bringing it into the board um, just for ratification and go through um, that. And so we have an assistant pastor for our district, amen, amen. to assist us in the work of the gospel. And we'll, we'll let you say something next week, amen. <laughs> amen. And, you know, we had me, me and Brother Barnett had a wonderful time talking, and we just thank God. Amen. amen. Thank you very much, amen. <laughs> amen. All right, let's go to the announcements. We have some announcements we want to make here. All right, for all state line board members, we got a, we got a treat for you. Um, brunch will be served. Amen. Amen. So all state line board members, for those of you that do not come on Zoom, all right. We're giving all of you the Zoomers, um, or because sometimes we do have um, Zoom board members that do come on Zoom. Um, if, you, if you want to, we got brunch. Amen. Amen. Brunch will be served at 9 a.m. And um, we, my wife has asked um, if you can bring some juice or some fruit or whatever you like to contribute. Um, so brunch, and let me say one more time, for a board meeting, brunch will be served. Amen, amen, amen for a board meeting. All right, we want to just, because I wasn't going to do it tonight, but somebody asked me, were you going to do it tonight? So tonight at 8 o'clock tonight, Central Standard Time, we want to have a special Sunday Law update on Zoom after the state line Sunday Law update because there are some changes that have taken place. And brothers and sisters, I believe the Lord's getting ready to come, and we're going to talk about it. Right now, um, a social media giant has stated, starting January, that they're going to talk about if any ads come out talking about the Catholic Church and Jewish holidays, a.k.a. the Sabbath Sunday issue, will be banned. We're going to talk about that on Zoom tonight at 8 o'clock. Amen. We're going to talk about that. So come on. So we'll be coming on. The meeting ID is the same, 703-029-6702. And we're going for the book called Creeping What? Compromise. Amen. And today we're going to do our, t our chapter is Colorful Cosmetics and what? Jewelry. Jewelry. And we, we have a quiz tonight. And the quiz is just one question. Is it a sin to wear jewelry? You'll find that out. You already know what the answer is, but we're going to show it tonight. Amen. So we're going to have a one, we're going to have a quiz, but the quiz is not going to be like every quiz. We're just going to just answer it for you. Amen. Amen. All right. Every week we're going to be studying the book, um, Creeping Compromise, until the end of this um, school year. Not school year. I said school year. I'm, that's the teacher of me. I'm thinking Oakwood now. It's until the end of this year. Excuse me. All right. All right. With weekly quizzes. Next Sabbath. Hallelujah. We have Elder Marcus Mason from Apocalypse Ministries. Amen. And then we're going to have our dedication for our children next Sabbath. Amen. And um, we talk about, we always talk about it every week. But what happens is what we want to do is we want to talk about, this is uh, somebody from Grenada watching. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And for those of you that want to send your study group, just to encourage us, um, you can send it to my number on WhatsApp or text it to me. Now, if you want to be baptized at State Line Seven Day Adventist Church, contact uh, us at 516-325-6104 for Sister Baylock. We'll be adding her husband next week. Amen. Amen. And you can contact me. Um, it's just amazing how um, people from just all over want to come and get baptized. There may be somebody watching right now. Um, just give us a call. And both of these numbers, you're on WhatsApp. Am I right, my sister? Yes. yes. So both of our numbers are on WhatsApp. And let me just let you know, this social media giant is also going to be banning it off of WhatsApp, too. Anything you put, advertise on WhatsApp will be banned about the Catholic Church. So the end is here, brothers and sisters. 
our state line motto is no apostasy what? Allowed. Amen. Amen. But not just that. And no fanaticism allowed either. Amen. We believe in the straight testimony, but we do not believe in separating from the seven day of any church. Why? Spirit of prophecy says, let not the professed people of God think it a privilege to separate from conference what? Organization. Organization. That they may show their supposed efficiency. This is entirely opposed to whose order? God's order. There is need of perfect unity and love, and this will appear when we learn of who? Jesus. So what happens is we believe in the straight testimony, but we do not believe in separating from the conference. Amen. And for those who think I'm a sellout, who wrote that? Sister White. So if, if I'm a sellout, then, hey, I don't want to be straight, right? Come on. Sister White is a prophet. She's the one that wrote that. And she herself never separated with all those messages that she wrote. See, the problem is you got people that hate the seven-day Adventist church that are seven-day Adventists. But what we're going to do is we're going to support this end-time church. And God's going to shake it. And guess what? The church ain't going to fall. It is the plan of God that every church and every conference shall cherish the feeling of reciprocal what? Dependence. Then the second paragraph says, shall the sacred chain of dependence which binds men together be looked upon as slavery? It's not. And I want to be happy to tell you that we have a great relationship with Gulf States Conference and brothers and sisters, we're doing good. We want to let you know that as of April 12th, Fair, if we do this every now and again, mask wearing and social distancing is encouraged at state line, but not what? Required. Alabama's now under a safer part where personal responsibility is what, somebody? Encouraged. And we will exercise all precautions under this order. Let's continue to pray for God's safety. But we do have one mandate. If you're sick, stay home. Oh, come on. Okay. If you're sick, what? Stay home. And our second mandate is follow the eight laws of health. Amen. Amen. So what we want to do is this. If you want to mail in your tithes and offerings, please, let me just say this to you. For those that are watching online, um, State Line, if you want to send your tithe to State Line 7 day Adventist Church, this is the only address you send this to. Don't send it to any other address other than what you see here. State Line 7 day Adventist Church, P.O. Box 723, Ardmore, Tennessee, 38449. Amen. Amen. You want to donate online? This is what I do, statelineal.adventistchurch.org. And every Monday through Friday, is, the, is it growing, Brother Barnett? El, Elder Barnett, is it growing? Good, good. We have the SDA, State Line SDA prayer line, 5.30 in the morning, Central Standard Time. We start at 97, um, phone number is 971-224-6601. Access code is 803 42 Eight. All right. We want to let you know that the latter rain is falling, brothers and sisters, and now is the hour. And what happens is we talked about a new church plant. Uh, because of what's been going on, we have to push it to next year. But we're going to be doing some little uh, talk with the conference already. They told me to send a budget uh, for the new church plant where they have a sponsor. They're going to sponsor us in doing little meetings around the Huntsville area. All right. You're just going to be doing little uh, health outreaches, and if there's anybody that wants to be a help with that, let me know. We want to do a, a, a health fair. We want to do a day where we can get maybe like a, a, a Scott Turner or a Mayman Wilson or a medical missionary to come down and do some lectures on health because that is the entering wedge. So right now, we, this is what we're going to be doing, and right now we're going to have our special music, and our special music will be given to us by... Oh, okay. And before, and before we go any further, just want to let you know that this afternoon at 3 o'clock, am I right, Sister Daphne Bob? Sister Bob? 3 o'clock, right? 3 o'clock is prayer, and then 4 o'clock, the Sunday Law update at 4 o'clock. We're going to start on time and end on time. Amen. And right now, we're going to turn it over to Brother Deontay, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Brother Deontay? Uh, we are. Happy Sabbath, everybody. I just want to say we have special music by Brother Wilkinson and Sister Jefferson. And then you'll hear the Word of God. Morning, church. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ did something for all of us, an unconditional love, an expression of love. And so as we sing this song, from this day forth, I ask all of you, 
to give your all to Jesus Christ until eternity, until he comes again. So may this song do something for you, pierce your heart with a commitment to serve Jesus Christ, giving him your all. tired of chasing pretty rainbows are you tired of spinning round and round wrap up all your shattered dreams of your Jesus, lay them down. Give them all. Give them all. Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams and wounded hearts and broken toys. Never said there be no rain. He only promised a heart full of singing. That's the very It's latter rain time. It's time for us to receive the Holy Spirit. It's time for us to pray that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a latter rain blessing. For this is the time when God wants to pour out largely of his spirit. Because brothers and sisters, we are in the Gethsemane experience about to go into the garden because Judas is coming with the entourage to betray us. And we need a power like never before. 
So what we're going to do is, is that we're going to pray right now for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the early and latter rain. And we're going to pray that God will give us a refreshing upon this place. Shall we kneel and pray as we get into the Word of God? Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer. We ask you for an early and latter rain experience. Ephesians says that we are to be filled with all the fullness of God. So if we receive that fullness by faith right now. And Father in heaven, we want to pray that you will manifest yourself in the early and latter rain through this sermon. And may you send conviction and conversion to every soul. Be with me as I preach the word of God. Be with those who are watching online. And we want to pray that all negativity from our minds be removed as it relates to this mission that we have. So, Father in heaven, bless us to this and we pray. And open your word in Jesus' name. Amen. It is important in these last days to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We want to let you know there's no other way that we can make it to the kingdom of heaven except through Jesus. And the Bible makes it very plain that Jesus is always near. And we do have um, our gifts for our baptism candidates. We'll do that at the end of the sermon. I forgot about that. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2. We're going to look at some um, reminders, some spirit-led reminders um, to help you in your walk with God. We want to let you know, brothers and sisters, that if Christ is in you, you have the victory over sin right now. Yes, you will be tempted. Yes, the flesh, the flesh will pull. But every time, it's like what Walter R.T. said, when I'm tempted and tried, he is close by my side. That's why I love my song right there. That's why I love him so. Brothers and sisters, we need to be filled day by day with the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. That means you must expect bread to come from heaven, amen, to feed you, not just physically, but spiritually. Every day, we're to pray that prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Give us a daily anointing of the Holy Spirit. And as the book of Isaiah says, that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. If there's any yokes in your life that seem to hold you down, I want you to look into Jesus. And this is the solution to all of our sin problems, Jesus and Jesus alone. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, chapter 1, excuse me, and verse 26, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, chapter 1, excuse me, verses 26 through 29, Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 through uh, 29, the Bible says, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. It's made manifest to us now, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ where, somebody? In you, the hope of glory. Christ where? In you. Christ where? In you. Christ, one more time, where? In you, the hope of glory. Now this is powerful. Whom we preach, verse 28, warning every man and teaching every man in, a, in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. You know, we may be accused of preaching about the Sunday law every week, but one thing, we, if it was anything that we need to preach every week, it's Christ in you. Do you understand this right here? Because if Christ is not in you, then somebody else is. Do you understand this right here? Can we say it one more time? If Christ is not in you, then somebody else is. Even Paul said, don't you know that Christ is in you except you be a reprobate? So the Bible makes it very plain that Christ in you will help us to be presented perfect in Christ. Amen? Which means that character perfection, and let me not just say character perfection, but, but sinless character perfection. Amen? It's possible by allowing Christ to dwell where? in you and Paul had so much assurance that we need to have that same assurance verse 29 says whereunto I also labor striving according to his working which worketh in me was somebody mightily so what happens is Christ is to work mightily through you that means that we need not 
how to hold our heads down. That we have a power within us to keep us from falling. Now unto him that's able to keep you from what? Falling. So if Christ is in you, then he can keep you from falling. Meaning he can keep you from falling into sin. Amen? And so as we come to the final crisis, we're to pray and ask God for the daily bread, the daily anointing of the Holy Spirit to where Christ can live inside of each and every one of us so that we may reflect the sinless character of God. And that means that we're going to have to spend some time agonizing in the garden. Amen? Just like Jesus. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians is right before Colossians. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse... Verses 16, we're going to look at 16 through 19. Ephesians chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 16 through 19. So what happens is that Christ in you, the hope of what, somebody? Glory. And that glory, you know what that word glory means? It means character. So we can reflect the character, the glory of God. And we really need to really let this be not just an intellectual truth, but it should be a living reality to where Christ is living where somebody in you the hope of glory Christ where somebody in you if Christ is in the heart if Christ is in the heart then guess what everything that's out of harmony with the word of God will drop off amen so when we talk about jewelry and adornment this evening before we get into our update we need to understand that when we talk about any reform Christ has to be where somebody in you. Jesus says, learn of me, Jesus says, for I am meek and lowly of heart. Notice this right here. I am meek and lowly of heart. And because he's meek and lowly of heart, when Christ is in you, you will be meek and lowly in heart. That means you won't be high-minded. Therefore, when Christ is in you, you won't find the need to make yourself high-minded by putting things on your body. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Bible says in verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his Lord. Hold on now. When's the last time I've heard that? Where God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and what? Glory by Christ Jesus. So by Christ Jesus, God would not only supply your temporal needs, but the first need he's going to supply is your spiritual need. And the spiritual need is to be strengthened, hallelujah, with might. To be strengthened with power. By his spirit in the inner man. That's the early reign experience. The way the Holy Spirit comes in your heart. And when you're born again, Jesus comes into your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus will strengthen you with all might and all power. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So as we come to the time of trouble, as we come to the close of probation, our prayers need to be ascending every day. Lord, may Christ be in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says to be strengthened with all might. By his spirit in the inner man. Do you understand this right here? Your soul. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy what? Heart. All of thy mind. All of thy soul and all of thy strength. The only way that can happen is if the spirit comes in you to make it happen. What does Paul say? Paul says in Romans that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So when we come, when we are converted, when we are born again, the spirit comes into the heart to give us that love. And what is that love? The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Keeping the Sabbath is not hard for me. Keeping the commandments is not a hard task for me. Why? Because I'm in love with the Savior. Do you understand this? And when you're in love with Jesus, not only because of what he's done before us, but what he's doing in us right now, then when sin comes, when you are tempted to compromise your principles, you can say, I love you so much, Jesus, I will not fall into sin. And let me tell you this right here. Many people right now, if they knew this simple truth, would come into the truth right now and would not compromise. Do you understand this? Remember that love. And so when we see the end time approaching, our prayer should be, Lord, give me the love so I won't receive the mark of the beast. Because what's happening is, is this right here. The devil's going to throw the fear factor that no man can buy or sell and that you will be put to death. But the Bible says in 1 John that there's no fear in love. Because perfect love, the Bible says, cast 
casteth out all fear. So I don't fear the Sunday law crisis. You understand that? I don't fear the time of trouble. Why? Because the love of God is in me through Jesus Christ. And by partaking of that love every day through prayer, acts, believe, and receive, guess what? We align ourselves with power to give us the grace to go through whatever. And let me tell you, we are told in inspiration that grace that is not needed is not given. So when the time of trouble comes, God will give you the grace to be a martyr. Amen. He'll give you power to stand though the heavens fall. Remember what Sister White says, the greatest one of the world is the one of men. Men who cannot be bought or what? Sold. The only way we cannot be bought or sold is by the love of God in us. Do you understand this right here? Men who in their inmost souls are true and what? Honest. That can only come through Christ in you, the hope of glory. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right what? Name. And what happens is we're not trying to be politically correct to gain the favor of anybody. Do you understand this right here? Anybody who's going to be a time server and a man pleaser will be lost. Men who do not fear to call sin by his right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as a needle to the pole. Notice this. And lastly, men who will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. And we're going to have to stand not only against people on the job, but the hardest people to stand against is people in your own families. There is somebody in this room that when your family is around, you tend to compromise. But what happens is I need you to go in your prayer closet and pray for the love of God to cast out the fear. Do you understand this? Because Jesus says, if you are ashamed of me and my words, so will I be ashamed of you when I come back. The Bible says in verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith. Notice this, that ye being rooted and grounded. Now, you understand when you build a house and when you plant some f- trees and some fruit, you got to make sure that you dig it deep. You got to put it deep in the soil in order for it to be rooted in what? Grounded. So when it grows, when the winds blow, amen? When the hurricanes come, when the tornadoes come, it won't fall. Do you understand this? Why? Because it's rooted deep. So notice this, when you're rooted, remember the song, grounded, firm, and deep? In the Savior's love. You see what this love is? See, what we're, t- what we're talking about is the true love of Jesus. See, the true love of Jesus teaches us to be firm and to stand firm. Do you understand this right here? Am I right? True love teaches you to be obedient when the world is disobedient. So this false love of Jesus that just patticates sin and just lets you just continue to keep doing what you want, that is not the love of Jesus. Do you understand this right here? The love of Jesus is, yes, God sending his son to die in this world, but love for Jesus is manifested by obeying God when the world says disobey. Have mercy. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. So Christ in you, the hope of glory, is a transaction that takes place by faith. By faith, you receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you got Christ. And you got a power that will keep you from falling. And as Desire of Ages says that Jesus will make sure that no power is known in that heart but his own. So when you surrender that heart daily, when temptation comes, surrender. Amen? Because the hardest part of living the Christian walk is surrender. Surrendering our thoughts, our feelings, our plans, even our emotions to God. Understanding, as Ellen White says, that faith is trusting in God. Believing that he knows what's best. And many of us have went ahead of the lovely Jesus so many times. You know why? Because we can't wait. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Waiting is not a virtue for God's people. And when God tells you to wait, oh, he's going to make me wait till I'm 100 years old. But it's better to get it at 100 than right now. Am I right? Am I right? So we got to understand that God knows what's best. But notice what the Bible says in verse 18. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height. And verse 19 says, and to know the love of who, somebody? Christ, which passeth what, somebody? Knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of who, somebody? God. And when we are praying for the early and latter rain, we are receiving God's fullness in our minds and in our hearts right now to where you don't got to smoke no more. Do you understand this right here? You don't have to drink anymore. You don't have to cuss or carouse or sin anymore. Why? Because you have a principle, and that principle is love. How many of you love your mothers? 
How many of you love if she's still alive? How many of you loved them? How many of you will be willing to, and we don't believe in fighting, how many be willing to defend and fight for your mama? Oh, we don't even have to say it. You see your mama getting attacked, you gonna go, you just, am inst- instinct kicks in. Am I right, somebody? It's instinctive to protect because, notice this, it's instinctive to protect because you love your who? Mother. But when Jesus is being attacked, when the truth is being attacked, do you understand this? Ellen White says that our religion within Adventism would be changed to where this is a different Adventism than the Adventism in the Bible. Do you understand this right here? Instinctively, you're going to fight against the omega of apostasy. Do you understand this right here? So we need Christ in us, the hope of glory. One more scripture, then we go to our story. Romans chapter 8. Um, because the creeping compromise is beyond creeping. It's leaping compromise. I mean, they don't, they don't, you got people, they don't care about the GC votes anymore. They don't care about no GC vote. We're going to just ordain them anyway. Do you understand this right here? And that's a sin. Do you understand this right here? Am I right, somebody? Am I right? To go ahead of the worldwide church when the worldwide church has voted and you participated in the process. And now you got people and they talk about state line being renegade. Let me tell you, you got some guts to go against the GC vote. Do you understand this right here? But you know what? Let me tell you this right here. We ain't going against anything. We're going against Satan's vote against us for us to compromise and to let the standard down. But at state line, we're not watering nothing down. Do you understand this? We're going to lift the standard high here at state line. Why? Because higher than the highest human thought could reach. It's God's standard for his children. Do you understand this right here? Many people are unprepared right now. Why? Because of too many half-baked sermons. Would you, ever, would you ever eat a pancake that was baked on one side? Oh, no, you wouldn't, brothers and sisters. So don't be expecting me to preach no half milk toast sermons. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We're going to give the what, somebody? Street testimony, brothers and sisters. What does the Bible say? Romans chapter 8. The Bible says, notice what the Bible says. Romans chapter 8 and verse, yeah, thank you, verse 9 and 10. Romans chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Because what is the straight testimony today, the Bible says? But verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, brothers and sisters. You are not in the flesh. You are not no carnal Adventists. Do you understand this, right? Those that are in the flesh are lukewarm. You are not in the flesh, but the Bible says, but you are in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells where? In you. You're supposed to have the early rain right now. And now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, the Bible says he is none of his. And verse 10 says, and if Christ be where somebody? In you through the power of the Holy Spirit, the body is dead. What? That means your sinful body is no longer in control. Have mercy. That means that it's not your body in control. It's Christ that is in control. To where you don't have to sin anymore. The Bible says the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. So the body is dead, but righteousness can live. What did Paul say in Romans? Don't yield your bodily members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But let me tell you this right here. We have all failed in this. But today we can make a new start. But what you're going to have to understand is this right here. You and I are no match for Satan. You and I are no match for the devil. You can have all the knowledge. But if that knowledge does not transform itself into where you are day by day, have mercy, Lord. Moment by moment surrendered and let me just say this to you if we're not surrendered to the holy spirit you are allowed to do anything the devil tells you to do do you understand this right here do you understand this it's very easy for me to preach from the pulpit and cuss you out tomorrow at the board meeting what i never done that okay so i never done that But if I'm not prayed up, do you understand this right here? 
and I go into a board meeting with my power, and my power, something may come up, or somebody may say something to me, to where I may say, like one lady said one time at a board meeting, she said, I'm tired of you talking to me like this, we're going to take it outside. People have said that. People have fought in churches. Am I right? Have you seen a fight in a church? I ain't talking about a, I'm talking about a, a knockdown battle. Am I right, somebody? I told you what happened in Georgia. They announced my name and boom, 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 boom. Two ladies were in the back. They were going for blows in the house of God. Am I right? In my flesh, oh man. And I had to be spiritual because my flesh was like, what? So I had to say, and I had to keep my, because you know what? Humanity loves violence. That Jerry Springer moment, right? Right? Huh? No, I said, no, let's pray, church. They were fighting on the Sabbath. That means that if you're not surrendered to God, you can lose your mind temporarily. Are you with me? Do you understand this right here? Have you ever done something before to where you're like, man, I can't believe I did that? Yes. I'm all right after you did it, right? But what happens is this right here. Your mind becomes intoxicated. And we are told that when you lose your temper, I'm talking to somebody. Spirit of prophecy said when you lose your temper under hot white heat, you become intoxicated just like you're drinking liquor. And when you're intoxicated, you may tell your wife and call her out of her name. Have mercy. I knew one husband told his wife, girl, you need to lose weight. And that's one thing you never tell your wife. <laughs> She'll never forget that. Oh, I didn't, this, this is what I talk about. People say, I didn't mean to say it, but did you? What's in the heart? The mouth speaker. And there's a saying that goes that women have long memories. But guess what? God's memory is longer. Let me say it one more time. God's memory is longer. That means you better forgive your husband and stop holding stuff against him. Amen. A year later, you know what you did. You know. I'm like, what you talking about, honey? What you said to me last year? I'm like, what? Just imagine if God did that. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. One time, this lady was telling me, she was it years, it's umpteen years ago. You insulted me. I said, why you say that? You were talking about my weight. I said, I, was not, I didn't say nothing about your weight. You told me to read councils and diets and foods. I'm like, That's okay. Let me, let, me, let, me use the, let me use the handheld mic. It's back on. We're going we to have the handheld mic just in case, all right? We got to be careful what we say to one another and how we say it. Now, I'm going to make this statement not because of anything. It's because Sister White said it. Sister White says Satan is present at every board meeting. He's present at every business meeting. Are you with me? And you know why some meetings go longer than what it is? Have you ever been in a business meeting or a board meeting where it went so long, you're like, look, I'm just gone. Huh? Have you? Sister White says that Satan will prolong it. Do you understand this right here? And so what happens is this right here, that's the reason why we got to pray before we go into these meetings. Do you understand this right here? Transacting business, the business of God, do you understand? Now, even if we disagree with one another, we still have to have the spirit to wear we have to learn not to be disagreeable. Amen. I know one conference out on the West Coast, and whenever there'll be some disagreement, or oh, it's about to get bad, they will stop and pray. Amen. I think husbands and wives need to do that. I know one couple, when they get into an argument, or they just stand right, one stands right here, and one stands right here, and they have to hug one another. 
All right, it's kind of hard to be really angry when you're hugging somebody, right? I think that's what they said, but that sounds like a good idea, right? Come, come here, honey. Come, come here. It's okay. And she be, ah! It's okay, right? We may have to do that. Do you understand this right here? I mean, I'm just keeping it real with you, right? All right, but anyway, bottom line is this right here. We're going to have to learn how to live a surrendered life in everything. Because you know what? After 50 years of life, I'm like, you know what? God is right, and I'm wrong. Now, why would you say something like that? Because you know why? Because subconsciously, the devil wants you to think that God's word don't really mean what it says. We think it means that for the Sunday keeper, but not for the Adventists, right? It means the same thing for all of us. If Christ is in you, your body is dead. And that's why Jesus told his disciples on the night before he died, I need some of you to come with me and pray with me. Because Jesus saw the storm coming. He saw the wrath of Satan preparing for him at the cross. And the devil was doing everything he can to make sure that Jesus would not die for us. Let me ask you a question. If we were all wildebeest in Africa, hypothetically, just say, let's use our imagination. If we were all wildebeest. There has to be a leader in this, in this bunch. Because that's because, just because they don't speak English don't mean that there's no communication. So I'm the head wildebeest, and I see some lions, and I thank God for not being an animal because you have to watch your back at all times. Am I right? The lion, the cheetah, the tiger, the anaconda, the python. I'm like, man, I'm like the hyena. I'm like, that's just that's too much for me. Just put me to sleep and stuff like that if I was an animal, right? Rather than live every day knowing that this could be the day where he gets me and eats me up. Do you understand this? So we're all wheeled to beast, and about a mile away, I see a lion walking. What would you want me to tell you? You sure? If the lion is coming, yes. right? Oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I don't think nobody in the animal kingdom mourns of that. Oh, that's just conspiratorial. Oh, the fact checkers have found out that's not really true, right? What would you have me tell you while he's a mile away or when he's right upon us? So that's the reason why we preach the way we do here. We're not waiting until a Sunday law comes tomorrow are you with me where you got to go to church tomorrow or else and we we got ways of tracking you down from satellite on your phone and let me think about it for a minute for everybody that has an iphone find my iphone you can press it right now it'll tell you where you at right now or where your phone is at usually your phone is at where your body's at am i right somebody so they don't know where you are on sunday am i right somebody but the bottom line is this right here jesus said go pray and rest a while but there were two individuals that were not surrendered, that we got to talk about. The first one was Peter. Oh, he was self-righteous. He said, all men, though all will be offended, I will not be offended. But there's a second one. His name was Judas. Judas is so infamous that you wouldn't even name your son Judas. <laughs> Judas is so infamous, ladies, you wouldn't marry a man. What's your name? My name is Judas. Oh, no. You need to change it. <laughs> change your name, right? <laughs> I'm all right. Would you do that? You're telling me you need to change I'm, I can't date you, right? But let me tell you this. The spirit of prophecy talks about Judas. Sister White says in Testimonies, Volume 6, page 264, that Satan is playing. Is, is my mic still on? Is it on? Okay. Satan is playing the game of life for every soul. He knows that practical sympathy is a test of the purity and unselfishness of the heart. And he will make it make every effort possible to close our hearts. Notice this to the needs of others. That we may be finally unmoved by the sight of human suffering. Could you eat a meal, a full course meal on Thanksgiving and see people starving right next door? You couldn't do it. He will bring in many things to prevent the expression of love and sympathy. Then she says, it is thus that he ruined Judas. Judas was constantly planning to benefit himself. See, it's one thing for Peter to be self-confident and think he's going to make it because he was around Jesus for three and a half years. 
But you got those in the church like Judas that are constantly studying to benefit themselves. I'm going to try to muscle my way in so I can be in this position. So I can take over. Are you with me? And notice this, that same spirit infiltrated and controlled everything. And notice when the Bible says that they were talking about who was the greatest. Remember that? Sister White said it was often Judas that brought that stuff up. Because they wanted to say that he was the greatest. He was the most educated out of all the ones, and he was the one that betrayed Jesus. Are you with me? He was constantly studying the benefit himself. In this, notice this, he represents a large class of professed Christians today. Therefore, we need to study his case. We are near to Christ as he was. Uh Uh-oh. Yet, as with Judas, association with Christ does not make us one with him. If it does not cultivate within our hearts a sincere sympathy for those for whom Christ gave his life, we are in the same danger as of Judas being outside of Christ, the sport of Satan's temptations. We need to guard against the first deviation from righteousness. Did you hear that? For one transgression, how many transgressions? One One neglect to manifest the spirit of Christ opens the way for another and still another until the mind is, notice this right here, overmastered by the principles of the enemy. That's why you got to put these kids in check when they transgress. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this right here? Not spoiling your kids, not patty cake in them, but letting them know the enormity of what they're doing. It says here, if cultivated, the spirit of selfishness becomes a devouring passion which nothing but the power of Christ can subdue. So let's go to verse 45 of Matthew 26. We're going to start at verse 45. We're going to look at a couple of verses and we're going to let you go. Understand, the spirit of prophecy says that the scenes of the betrayal of Christ and the crucifixion of Christ is going to be reenacted. And it's being reenacted right now. And in this, we see state line seven day of in this church. And the question is, is there a Judas in the house? Or is there a Judas in you? You understand this right here? Because let me tell you this right here. Just because you come to state line don't mean you won't betray your brother when the right time comes to do that. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this? I as a pastor and you as lay people have been stabbed in your back by people within the same house of faith. Am I right, somebody? So guess what, brothers and sisters, is a Judas in every church. Have mercy. But guess what? You you, you don't have to be a Judas. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in verse 47, and while he yet, Jesus says in verse 45, then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, he prayed and prayed and prayed. Jesus has been interceding in the sanctuary for all these years. And when he intercedes, guess what? Probation closed. He says, sleep on now and take your rest. Other words, those who are sleeping in the church, just keep on sleeping because guess what? In one scripture, it says the hour of darkness has come. Have mercy. But in this text right here, take on your rest. Behold, the hour is at what, somebody? And and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of what, somebody? Sinners. That which Satan has been waiting to do for three and a half years is now about to take place. And let me tell you this right here. God is in the garden. God is in the sanctuary interceding for us. Christ is interceding for us day by day in the sanctuary. But the time is going to come. He's going to say the hour is at hand and Christ through his people are going to be betrayed. Rise, verse 46, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. See, what happened was when that night started, it was 12 people that started, but there was only 11 because one decided to leave Jesus at the 11th hour. Have mercy. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of seven day events leaving right now, leaving this faith, leaving this message right before the Sunday law is about to be enforced. They have now believed that the Sabbath is no longer binding and that Sister White's a false prophet and that Adventism has no biblical foundation. But let me tell you this right here, brothers and sisters, these people are going to betray us in the last days if they don't come back. Look at verse 47. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the what? Twelve, came and with him a great multitude. Hold on now. He came with the multitude of the enemies of Christ, meaning that there could be somebody in this room that can go to the authorities and report us in the last days. And you know why Judas did it? Because he wasn't surrendered. That's the reason why. And it says they came with him with swords and with staves. In our day, just be guns and knives, right? 
from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Have mercy. And now he that betrayed him, the Bible didn't even say his name no more. Have mercy. Now he that betrayed him, because you know what his name was. He was so infamous, God didn't even want his name mentioned no more. Have mercy. And now he that betrayed him gave him a sign saying, whosoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. But hold on now, didn't he realize that Jesus was going to be um, betrayed anyway? That he's going to be crucified anyway? Ellen White says that Satan, when, he, when, when, when um, Judas did this, he was trying to teach Jesus a lesson. But you know what happened. The Bible says in four with, verse 49, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master. Hold on. That's like saying, Happy Sabbath, Pastor. Hmm? And then the Bible says, He did what? Kissed. In the Greek, for those theology majors from Oakwood, in the Greek, when it says He kissed him, it meant He kept kissing him. Have mercy. Not just one kiss of betrayal, but multiple kisses of betrayal. Satan had complete control of Judas. Do you understand this right here? And understand that those that have left the faith are going to betray us to the Catholics. Can I read it to you? Can I read it to you? I mean, you do believe in the spirit of prophecy, right? Let me read it to you in just a second. Let's go to the screen right now. Notice what the spirit of prophecy says. The spirit of prophecy says, go to the screen, and those that are in the back, you can just uh, put it up. Here it is right here. I saw, she says, I saw the nominal church. Hmm, the nom- what kind of church? Nominal. Spalding and McGann Collection, page one. I saw the nominal church and the nominal Adventists like who? Judas would betray us to the Catholics to obtain their influence to come against the truth. The saints will then be in what kind of people? Obscure people, little known to the Catholics, but the churches and the nominal Adventists who know of our faith and customs, for they hated us on our account of the Sabbath, for they could not refute it, will, didn't say shall, will betray the saints. And notice this, do what to them? To the Catholics. Hold on now. Why is this report to the Catholics? Because something's getting ready to happen to put the Catholic church into power as those who disregard the institutions of the people. That is, they keep the Sabbath and disregard what? Sunday. And guess what the Pope is pushing right now? Pope to the International Labor Organization, which if you do your research, we'll show you this afternoon, is pushing for one day of rest on Sunday. Urgent need for economic reform and protection of all his workers is the Pope really concerned about protection for all his workers, or is he concerned about getting us to receive his mark? Then he says, time is running out. Decisive action is what, somebody? Needed. needed. Then he says, he warns against false preachers on what, somebody? Social media. And guess what has happened this week? The Pope warns against false preachers. Where? Brothers and sisters, the hour of darkness is coming. But hold on now. He says failure to protect creation will mean facing God's what? In other words, if you don't do as I say, God's going to send judgment. Ellen White says they will say it because they're not keeping Sunday holy. But brothers and sisters, are you ready for this? Are you ready for what I'm about to show you? Oh, I have to show you. I'm not going to preach it all today. But all right, we'll come this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Forbes magazine, the hour Judas is coming to betray his brothers and sisters. And notice what it says. Meta, which is the parent company of Facebook, will soon ban targeting ads based on sensitive categories, including religion and politics. What does this have to do with Seven Day Adventists? I'm glad you asked. Facebook's parent company says it will no longer let advertisers buy targeted ads. And remember those that used to follow me on my other page that I still can't get back up? I used to put the Mark of the Beast flyers out there. Even this year, I was not able to put them up. They won't let me advertise no more. 
And I'm going to show you why. Let's go back to the screen. Facebook's parent company says that it will no longer let advertisers buy, buy targeted ads for users based on sensitive information such as race, political affiliation, sexual orientation, religion, or what? Hell. Now notice this right here. We do got to be careful what we say. But notice what it says. And one of its what kind of moves? Major moves since rebranding as Meta, the company plans to remove options to target people based on how people reference what causes, notice this, organizations or public figures. Is the Catholic Church an organization? Is the Pope a public figure? Watch this right here. It says, now, it will go into effect on what day? It will be rolled out across all of Meta's platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, but notice these last two, Messenger and WhatsApp. We use Messenger. We've been using Messenger to hide from Facebook. Am I right? We won't put it on our, there's some things we won't put on our front page, but we'll send it through Messenger, right? They're going to catch you through Messenger and ban it. And WhatsApp, and let me tell you, I get WhatsApp all the time, people all over the world, as well as if it's major, major network of websites and apps using Facebook ads targeting tools. For example, advertisers will no longer see health-related categories for keywords such as World Diabetes Day. Now that's kind of like why. Chemotherapy. Why? But listen to this right Or religion-based words, including Catholic Church. It's over. And Jewish holidays, a.k.a. the Sabbath is Saturday and Sunday is the mark of the beast. It's over, y'all. If they're talking about shutting ads down, then pretty soon it's gonna start, they're going to start shutting videos down, which means that we at State Line... The Sunday Law update that you love so much, our days are numbered. Do you understand this right here? Which means that work we're going to have to do, we're going to have to expand our platform and to go to alternative platforms. And I'm going to let you know right now, we're working on something right now. I talked to Brother Abraham. We're working on something right now that if you come up one day, you can't find us, we will already be on another platform. And what we're going to do, we're going to put our state line videos on our website. They can't touch that. Do you understand this right here? Just in case. And we will have it up. Brothers and sisters, that should excite you because Jesus is getting ready to come. This means that we're being watched. Am I right, somebody? Why would they say Catholic Church? You know why? Because the Pope is pushing for world unity, am I right? To stop all this stuff that's going on, am I right, somebody? And so this is the reason why, because of this, we need to keep doing the Sunday Law Update. Am I right, somebody? Because, brothers and sisters, you don't know who we're reaching. But, brothers and sisters, I got something to show you. And you need to fasten your seatbelts because I'm about to show you something that's going to knock your feet out from under you. Remember, Judas, which represents those who have betrayed the faith, do you understand this, are going to turn us in. Am I right, somebody? And if you're not strong to handle this betrayal, you're going to fall like everybody else is going to fall when this time comes. Now, what I'm going to show you is something here. I wasn't going to show it to you. Notice this, Ray. Let's go to the screen. We're going to show you an art, a, a, a document that I received back in 1990-something. I've been sitting on this for a long time. People ask, where, did you get, where can I find it? You can't find it on the Internet no more. The president of the Inter-American Division at that time had read it, and he ignored it, but he realized it was real, and then he put it out to the division. And brothers and sisters, remember, they're going to betray us to the Catholics. Am I right? Look what it says, special document from the where? The Catholic plan to evangelize Seventh-day Adventists. The, the project is the most coveted sectarian group. It says the evangelization of who? Seventh-day Adventists 
with the true gospel constitutes the greatest goal of the Catholic Church for the return of Protestants to Rome. You know why? Because of the three angels' messages. Because of that. Can I read it? It says, they have 10 steps. Number one, to instill ideas and projects among the Adventists which will help to foster a closer Catholic Adventist relationship. And that has happened. To where you got some of our Adventist hospitals yoking up with Catholic hospitals. You're a witness, so we know this stuff is true. This need, need, this need not be. Number two, to make concessions to bring the Catholic way of thinking with seven-day Adventists. You know what they want? They want cadaver obedience. <laughs> you know what a cadaver is, right? In other words, pray, pay, pray, and obey. <laughs> Can I say it one more time? Pray. They want you to just pray, pay, and obey. Don't question anything we do, right? But thank God we got checks and balances. But look at number three. To see and analyze common evangelizational objectives with seven-day Adventists. If we go to the Catholic Church and try to evangelize with them, we'll never get nothing done because the second and third angel's message talks about that very organization. And this is the reason why the, papes, the Pope said, don't listen to these false prophets on social media. You know who he's talking about? All of us. Am I right? Look at verse 4. To remove the erroneous paradise that Adventists have about the Roman Catholic Church. That's the third angel's message. So when Facebook is talking about taking down ads and talking about the Catholic Church, then the question is, who's the one telling them to do that? Why didn't it say the Mormon Church? Why didn't it say the Baptist? Because there's Adventists like myself and others on social media that are putting up stuff and buying ads. We won't be able to do so after June, June January 19th. Number five, to show Adventists that their origin as a church has no biblical foundation. Y'all not the remnant church. Hmm? And you got seven-day Adventists doing that. Am I right, somebody? That have left. Am I right? You see them on social media? So, you know, and last night we did a video. Some of you saw we did a video he was doing it with Larry Nicholas, but something was going on with his page to where he couldn't get it working. So I had to do it with Jamal, and me and Jamal, we did a Bible study for all like, all like an hour and a half, showing from the Bible that we have a biblical foundation. On the sanctuary, do you understand this right here? And understand this right here. All of seven-day Adventism stands and falls based on our proper understanding of the sanctuary. If 1844 was not the correct date, if there is no most holy place day of atonement ministry in the most holy place right now by Jesus, which it is, then this thing is a cult. This thing of, or oh, Ellen G. White said this, but the Bible said, that don't bother me, because you know why? Everything that people have thrown against Ellen White has been answered. Everything. See, if you don't read everything in its context, or if you don't read everything she says on it, then yes, there are things just like when you read the Bible, right? Let me just throw this out at you. How many, according to Exodus, how many people came into Egypt? How many? Seventy. Acts chapter 7 says it was 75. So which one is right? Both of them are right. The explanation is there somewhere, but if you look at it from the surface, oh, the Bible contradicts itself. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus healed Bartimaeus, one scripture says he met him coming out of Jericho. One said it was coming into Jericho. Which one was right? They will hold Sister White on a higher standard than they would the Bible. But guess what? It's an answer for both. And as C.D. Brooks says, it doesn't matter whether it's coming or going. I was once blind, now I can see. Am I right, somebody, right? Come on. So let's go back to, the, to what? Now, this is really going to get sticky now. It says, number six, look at number six, to show seven-day Adventists that the writers of L.N.G. White are false. There it is right there. 
Talking about there ain't no judgment infiltration? It's satanic infiltration. Look at number seven. To show seven day Adventists, and let me tell you, who are they using to do this? I don't think the Catholics are doing it. I think they just got their agents promoting their agenda. And like Alberto Rivera said, that you've had, that this church has been infiltrated by Jesuits. Am I right? Who are teaching our ministers to downplay, have mercy right here. Did David kill, now, did David, Elder Barnett, did David kill Uriah? Not personally, but he got somebody else to do it. Am I right, right? So when they evangelize us, they say, we ain't going to come in there as father so-and-so. Either we're going to disguise ourselves or we're going to just do something different to get the same agenda across. Exactly. Because you got to understand, we're living in a day when we are ashamed of our own message. Just like the disciples, though they were following Christ, but they were still influenced by what the Pharisees felt. Because when the crisis came, they fled. Because they were ashamed of Jesus. Let's go back to <laughs> number six. Seven, let's go to number seven. To show seven-day Adventists how damaging to world peace is their position regarding the Pope, the Virgin Mary, and Sunday as a day of rest. It's over. It's over. When I say it's over, that's just a figure of speech. I mean, do I need to explain myself? If I'm about to play basketball, I got, hold on, I got to say it. If I got my five and there's four and LeBron James come in, we say, man, it's over. It's over before it got started, right? So that's what we mean. Come on. When we say all that, when we say, when I say it's over, we just mean this thing's about to be ready to come. Look at verse look, number eight. To let seven day Adventists know that their church has the highest record of apostasies among Protestants due to the theological differences among them. I saw one that said, they, I saw somebody on their post said that same thing this week. Y'all said y'all the true church? All these people done left. It must be because your doctrine ain't right. Right. Are you ready for the last two? You ready for the last two? Are you, let me ask you, are you ready for the last two? No, you're not. You're not. Show, you want me to show it? Okay, I'll, I'll show it. Let's look at number nine. To unmask before the world the steps that the Adventist church has taken through its bona fide leaders through Catholic, towards Catholics and ecumenism. And you've seen that. You've seen leaders standing in the same room with the Pope. Not with no great controversy or a Sunday law to give to them, but sitting around them like everything is okay. Am I right? Am I right, somebody? And I tried to defend it, but I can't defend this no more. Because the bottom line is, and then they're going to get on the Adventist Review and try to tell us that we're wrong for preaching it. Are you with me? And then on Adventist today, they got on Adventist today telling you and I that the great controversy is outdated. And the word ordained SDA ministers are telling you that the book National Sunday Law is not the book to get out to the world. And then I had a self-supporting minister, and it's not who you think it is. It's not who you think it is. You never heard this person before. He tried to make the argument that you should not pass up the great controversy for free. You should sell it. What? People give Bibles away for free. If you don't have the money to get a Bible, oh, you don't have the money, Elder Barnett, so I'm not going to give you a Bible? What kind of selfishness is that? That's Judas right there, brothers and sisters. You give it to him for free. Am I right? And I got a text right now from one of our um, people who come to church here about the great controversy that we mailed out, there are people that said they love the book. Yes. See, when it comes to evangelism, one thing, I pre one thing I love about Elder Barnett, he ain't scared to spend no money. Amen. Now, I'll be the one being like, I don't know about that. You're like, no, we got to do it. I'm like, <laughs> you know why? Because think about it for a minute. Can you put a price on one soul? You can't put a price on the soul. So if we put out $10,000, you're like, man, that's too much. What if somebody gets saved because of that $10,000? They'd be like, it was worth it. Am I right, somebody? So let's go back. Ecumenism. But look at number 10. 
Let's, let's go to the screen. I want the people to, to see this. Number 10. To make Seventh-day Adventists understand that if they do not unite with Catholics and Protestants to seek world peace, they'll be guilty of all the evils and disasters that come upon the earth. There it is. There it is. That's what they said. That's what they said, brothers and sisters. Yeah, great. That's right, my, that's right, Elder. Great controversy. That's why we got to get the third angel's message out and tell the people, come out of her, my who? You seen this picture when I had hair. 2003 was walking in the streets of Tulsa, Oklahoma in the historic Greenwood section. Some of you know about the, the Tulsa Greenwood right back. Knocked on this lady's door, Sheila, her name was Sheila Johnson. I sold her a book and I gave her a Sunday law book. Next week she said, I like the book. Can we have Bible studies? Started studying. The next week her husband, Val, came to me and said, look, my brother, can you sh I've been a Baptist for 47 years out of the 47 years of my life. Can you show me from the Bible that the seven days the Sabbath? And I humbly showed it to him. And that day, September 2003, 18 years ago, I baptized those two as seven-day Adventists. And they still seven-day Adventists to this day. Huh? Okay. I need to talk to you about that. <laughs> Listen to this right here. So we got to get the message out, brothers and sisters, and not be worried about what the Vatican is going to do. They are assembling to, the, they assembled in the 1960s for the final overthrow of Protestantism. And Alberto Rivera said it. If it's a, don't say Dr. O said it, you better say Dr. O read it. He says, the first Protestant group that the Jesuits moved upon were the Seventh day Adventists. That's a compliment. Because they know what we believe. So if I was the devil, what church would I infiltrate? I would infiltrate the SDAs all day long. Am I right? Then it says, and then into the Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, until they were all what? Infiltrated. And notice the Lutherans have come back to Rome, including the Mormons and the who? They even infiltrated the Jehovah Witnesses. And then all the what? Seminary universities and colleges were what? And you want to be, if you want to be immortal, be a teacher. Meaning that a teacher has a lot of influence. And I have seen in my years as a student and otherwise, I have seen students come out strong. They came in strong, but they came out liberal. We have seen it. I have had people with PhDs in theology. There are SDAs that will tell me. One told me to my face, this idea about us being the remnant, that's not even biblical. I said, what? And I'm saying, What? And they be the ones that be in these major positions of power. Yes. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Huh? Yeah. They don't believe in the investigative judgment? The Bible says the judgment was set and the books were Open. for what? Investigation. And then Ellen White, oh, she was not a theologian. They, some people say that. She's outdated. She had only a third grade education. In other words, she had no degree. And the one thing about SDAs we're guilty of, we're guilty of academic idolatry. We worship degrees. We worship education. Education is necessary. But let me tell you this right here. Let me tell you how people are. Does he have a degree? Okay. Where did he get it from? Okay, then they ask, is it accredited? Are you with me? Am I right? And then if it's everything, if there's no way out, if, it's, if everything is right, then they'll say, oh, he's too conservative in his DI. It's always trying to jab somebody. Do you understand this right here? I remember one time I had somebody tell me to my face, and it's the truth, so I'm not, I'm just going to say it. Now, let me just say this to you. Now, I got two doctorates, but that don't mean a thing. You understand this right here? This person tried to tell me that I would be looked upon with less favor for hiring as a teacher because of where I got my PhD from, 
that is accredited, while there are five, six other people at the same institution that got it from the same place. I said, man, you know what I realized? That this person here don't really want me to be on full time. They don't. You know why? Would you say elder? Yeah, I let, if you heard it, he said it, not me. <laughs> you got people who don't want the truth to be taught to our children. That's just the bottom line. And if you're teaching us a little too traditional on the traditional side, we got to betray him and turn him in to the Catholics, if you know what I'm talking about. Let's finish this up. All the seminary universities and colleges were next. Then the Jesuits were directed to Catholic Youth Action, Legion of Mary, and Knights of Columbus who pulled it off. Now these groups are what, somebody? Silent about Rome. I know. We're not as vocal about Rome like we used to be. You know it. You go read Adventist literature 115 years ago when Sister White was living, they were, they were, they were, she was, they were doing it so hard. Sister White said, just kind of calm down us a little bit, right? You know what I'm saying? They were blowing up. You can take it off of the screen. I'm just going to leave it on there for you to read it. This thing is real. It's a real, I hate to say conspiracy, but this is a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. I like what Sister Daphne said. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy realist. You understand this, right? This is real, brothers and sisters. There's Judases among the bunch that are getting ready to betray us. But guess what happened? Let's go back to verse 50. I know what time it is. So guess what? I got to do part three next time, right? <laughs> verse 50 says, and Jesus said unto him, friend, now Jesus betrayed. Now Jesus did say love your enemies, right? Am I right? He wouldn't tell you that unless he practiced it himself, right? He said, and Jesus said, so while he was kissing him, he said, friend, have mercy. That should have broke his heart right there. That should have said, hold up, what in the world am I doing? And Jesus said unto him, friend, wherefore art thou come? In other words, what you come here for? And, they, and then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Are you ready for the final crisis when all hell breaks loose upon you? And behold, one of them, which were with Jesus, stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest's ear and smote off his ear. You know who that was, right? And when they saw that Jesus was not going to do anything about it, look at verse 55. In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, are ye come out against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily. See, Jesus, Jesus is so powerful. He said, I sat daily with you in the temple and ye laid no hands upon me. He wasn't like certain organizations where like, I mean, let's like the nation of Islam. When Lewis Farrakhan be preaching, he got two big black men standing right on the side. When he goes this way, they go that way. When he goes that, you know, I can see that. But Jesus didn't have no bodyguards, am I right? He was preaching the love of God, but yet they hated Jesus so much. They would have killed him on the spot. But look at verse 56. And all this was done that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And then all the disciples forsook him. You know why they did that? Because what's going to happen to Jesus is going to happen to me. Are you ready for the final crisis? Chapter 26. We're going to have to do, we have to do Peter week after next. We're going to do a whole sermon on Peter. Is there a Peter in the house? That's the, next, that's the next sermon title. Is there a Peter in the house? Let's look at chapter 27 so we can finish off with Judas. Let's, get, let's just get rid of Judas right now, okay? Let's, let's, let's stop talking about Judas. Verse 27, verse 1, and I'm closing. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They got Jesus right where they want him. The day is going to come, they're going to think they got Adventism right where they want him. Yo, we got him now. We got him now, right? And verse 2, and when they bound him, they led him away and delivered him unto Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, have mercy. The Bible says, then Judas. Then who? 
which had betrayed him when he saw that he was what? And you know what Sister White says? That he, that he did it to teach Jesus a lesson and he thought that Jesus would escape. But when he realized that what he really had did, then the Bible says he repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces, 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. This is symbolic of those that when probation closes, they're going to realize that they're lost and they're going to throw it to the priest. But notice what the Bible says. Saying, verse 4, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? In other words, we don't care. See thou to it. His conscience was so condemned that the Bible says, and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. And the Bible says he hung himself. Judas died a lost man. There are those that are going to betray us. But let me tell you how the story ends. Jesus did get whipped. He did get crucified. But I'm going to let you know that third day, that Sunday morning, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus rose up in fulfillment of prophecy. And he rose with power to where Jesus says, I have the keys of hell and death. Hallelujah. I, am al I was once dead, but now I'm alive. And evermore. Sister Burton, can you play the piano, please? Spalding and McGann Collection, page two says, Then the Catholics and bid the Protestants to go forward to issue a decree that all who will not observe the first day of the week and said that the seventh day shall be slain. And the Catholics, whose numbers are large, will stand by the Protestants. The Catholics will give their power to the image of the beast, and the Protestants will work as their mother worked before them to destroy the saints. But before the decree, bring or bear fruit, the saints will be delivered by the voice of God. To where it's going to turn black. And a voice is going to say, look up, look up, look up. And we're going to see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And the servant of the Lord says that we knew that that was the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. And as the cloud comes nearer and nearer and nearer to the earth, all faces will gather paleness, and then we see Jesus and the angels. And it's going to stop, and it's going to be a pause. And the saints are going to say, who shall be able to stand? And Jesus is going to say, those that have clean hands and pure hearts. And he's going to come back. And guess what? All of a sudden, he's going to say, awake, awake, those that have died in me. And you're going to see your mother that died in the faith. She may not have died in the third angel's message, but she died believing in Jesus. You're going to see your parents, your loved ones that we raised up in that first resurrection. And then we're told that those that died in the faith of the third angel's message will be raised up to hear the covenant that God will speak to his children. And then before you know it, we should be transformed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, to where the Bible says that we will have an incorruptible body, to where we won't have cancer no more, no more cancer, no more diabetes, no more high blood pressure, no more sickness of any kind. And then we're going to say when we get to heaven that heaven was cheap enough. And what is Jesus going to say? Because you stood stiffly for my truth. Come into the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters. It has been a hard journey for all of us. We have had our pitfalls. We have had our trials and tribulations. But I'm here to let you know we're still survivors. We're survivors. God has got us through. And the songwriter said, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Yes, sister, come on. And my appeal is, is there somebody in this room that says, Lord, give me power. Give me strength. Give me courage. Give me the power of prayer right now. If that's your desire, stand to your feet right now.
we're going to pray. Usually we ask people to come down, but we're just going to pray because time is late. But I promise you, we're going to work on it where we won't get out this late. Amen. So don't be mad at me. Amen. Amen. But the hour of salvation is here. There may be somebody in this room that says, I need to give my life to the Lord. I need to be baptized. I need to be rebaptized. This is your moment, brothers and sisters. This is the hour of light to where you can come and say, Lord, I need to take a stand. And if that is your desire, come on down to this front. If you want to be baptized, if you want to be rebaptized, come on down to the altar and just come on in. The doors of the church are open. Maybe you want to join State Line Seven Day Adventist Church. You've already been baptized. You want to join this church through transfer of membership. If that's your desire, come on down to the front too. You like what you're hearing and you want to be a part of this church that's just trying to do God's will. If that's your desire, come on down to the front. If you want to join State Line through transfer of membership or you want to be baptized, you want to be rebaptized. If that's your desire, come on down to the front right now. Amen. Praise God, Sister Daphne. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is there another one who wants to I want to join State Line. I want to be baptized. Amen. 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 Come on down. Amen. Praise God. You want to transfer. You've been coming here. You're a state liner in physicality, but you want to be in a reality. You want to come and join this church. Come on down to the altar. Amen. Praise God. Is there one that wants to be baptized? Are we rebaptized? Come on down to the altar. Brother and sister Baylock, you'll get their, get their request. It may be transfer. If it's transfer, what happens is we'll do it with sister um, Yarbrough. Is there one more? Is there one more that wants to come on down? The hour is late. We don't like getting out at 155. We want to get out earlier, but the bottom line is when it comes to salvation, I'd rather keep it an hour late than somebody closing out at 1 o'clock and somebody go to hell. Is there one who wants to come on down to the front and say, I want to be a part of State Line. I want to join. I want to I want to make, I want to be uh, on the roll here at State Line. We understand that church membership does not guarantee salvation. But what happens is if you want to be a part of this fellowship, come on down to the altar. Or you want to be baptized or rebaptized. Maybe you can't come down to the front. Maybe you just want to raise your hand. And say, I just want to be part of the next baptism. Is there one? Is there one? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come come on down to the front so we can get. Amen. Praise God. We praise God for my brother. He had a wonderful field trip with the homeschoolers at the White Estate and at Oakwood yesterday. They had a powerful time. Is there another one right now who wants to come on down to the front? Don't be ashamed. I know it's late, but what happens is we can start the Sunday Law update later than 4 o'clock. We want to make sure that you give your calling and election sure today here at State Line SDA. Is there another one? Is there another one? Amen. Praise God. Amen. We have another one. Come on, come on down. Come on down, my brother. Huh? Somebody got their hands up? Brother Cliff, if somebody got their hand up in the back right there, let's get on the back, right around the corner right here. Amen. 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 Is there another one? We got, all right. Amen. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we want to come before you in prayer. We ask that you'll seal the commitments that have been made. And there's, if there's somebody's watching right now, contact us at my phone number or Sister Baylock's phone number. You want to be a part of this fellowship. Father, we pray that you would bless us, Lord God, as a church, Lord. We don't know what's coming down the pathway, but God in heaven, give us strength. May Christ be in us the hope of glory. And may we not be like Judas, Lord God. May we be like Jesus, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, for the hour of darkness. Thank you, Lord, for Elder Barnett's testimony, Lord God. May it be a testimony that God has the last say so. And Father in heaven, we want to pray for this church that you pray for our board, pray for our church, Lord, every member, every officer, Lord, that we will be what you will have us to be. Thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer as we continue to stand for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn. We have the names, and um, we, let's do that after, after we do our closing song, okay? All right, what's the song? Higher grace. Higher grace. Yes, indeed, it's a powerful song. We are nearing home. All right. Oh, it's not on. Oh, the screen is off.
standing for the benediction the benediction is coming from Revelation chapter 22 verse 20 and 21 and the Bible reads 
He which testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. You may be seated for a moment of meditation. And I also want to remind you that the prayer, uh, Sister Bob, uh, with Sister Bob will be in the sanctuary at 3 o'clock. We want to give the um, newly baptized people, can they all come up right now? Sister Gunn. Amen. Sister Brown. Amen. We do want to apologize. And Brother Cliff is going to give it to you on behalf of State Line Seven Day Adventist Church. We're going to give this gift to you as a token of our love and appreciation. And God bless you. God bless you. Where's my third sister at? Where's she at? Where's she at? They got baptized today. Okay. All right. Sunday Law update at 4:15, and we'll come back for some more. God bless you.